Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Oh. And it's really, <laughs> it's re- normally we do this without video, so it's really weird seeing Amanda going, Yeah, um, welcome to my rubber face. <laughs> It's real rubbery. It's so rubbery. <laughs> I have a rubber face. You do. You look like unrecognizable. No, you can't read, read, read my, my rubber, rubber face. face. She's got, got a rubber, rubber face. face. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, we have a very special. Oh, I'm have to introduce who I am. Oh, shit. <laughs> Especially important <laughs> now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for viewers, I am Kenyon, the blonde one with the great tits, who yeah. does the really dark cases <laughs> mm-hmm. and speaks French annoyingly. Mm-hmm. I'm Kenyon. Papier mâché. Papier mâché. That's me. That's her. I'm Love Lucy. It. I'm a spooky little bitch. I do mm-hmm. background in psych. What color is my hair? Uh, kind of brownish. I got a creepy doll on the back. That's me. Glasses, cats. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Tooth necklace. Tooth necklace, cat hair. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm Amanda, a clown with a rubber face and a snaggle tooth. You can't fucking miss me. You can see me from mm-hmm. space. <laughs> no one needed. No one needed that. She's the only one. Everyone that identifier. Knows who she is. Honestly, one of my favorite oh, yeah. moments ever was when we were on tour last summer and we were at a venue that only had a bathroom in the lobby, and Lucy really had to go to the bathroom, and so she went through the lobby and walked through a crowd of people who were there to mm-hmm. see our show, and not a mm-hmm. soul knew who she was yeah it was great (laughs) lucy and i at at the portland show we had to wait in line to get drinks before the show we almost missed the start of our own show because we were like waiting in line at the bar to get drinks we needed drinks nothing new (laughs) not new hurting cats oh yeah nobody knew who the fuck we were which is fine why would they yeah it got me to the bathroom quicker it got our drinks quicker (laughs) <laughs> Anonymity and we, is not my thing. Yeah. We don't no. crave constant attention from strangers like I love attention. <laughs> it fuels me. <laughs> it does. <laughs> no issues here. None. <laughs> my life's blood. <laughs> we have a very special fan pick this week. Very mm-hmm. special. We uh this is episode 169. Nice. And um because it's 169, we have uh slotted in our fan pick topic. Oh, Oh, <laughs> and it's stretched to accommodate. Yeah, as, to as you. it should. <laughs> so the topic is strip club crimes. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. This Brought is a fun one. By, yeah, this is a really good one. Brought to you by Jessica Grigio. Ooh, Pinot like Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Grigio. I don't know. Grigo. Call Grigo. Ah, Grigo, no. Mm, there's no Grigo, no. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so Jessica says, quote, I heard about your amazing podcast while at work at the club mm. in a private champagne room while getting paid thousands by a client. Get Somehow it. he... Yeah. Somehow he and I started to talk about true crime and he recommended you. <laughs> because that's a totally normal convo for the situation. Your so client out. was your gateway guest? Wait, yeah. Gateway In client. the champagne room. <laughs> I'm And then so Jessica says, shook. shout out to Adam in Seattle. <gasps> Thank you, Adam. Gateway Hi. daddy. 
Gateway <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> we will gladly, daddy. gladly accept thousands in Patreon donations yes, without we taking will. any classes on how to dance because no. it won't help. Because we're already experts. We're so gonna. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I think I, I just used, hurt myself. I used to actually be like an okay dancer, but then I. Like early on, like at like 27, I think I just started to only mom dance. I've never not mom danced. This is a good one. Oh, this this is my go to. Oh, I like that. I also want to. Yeah, Lucy's into the shoulders. Hiking up your mom jeans. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hiking up those leggings to get rid of that. that, (laughs) You know, that fold. Do your taxes. Do you Texas? Mm, mm, mm. I don't know. I made that up and it's awesome. I don't know. I don't do my taxes, so I don't know. Not kidding. Uh, <laughs> call your mom. Do your taxes. Check call on your, your grandma. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> call your grandma. Right. Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be the longest episode of all time. Okay. The so, strip club uh, we open will be closed within 45 minutes of it opening. I would oh, you don't like think to that explore the option of a chicken strip club. <laughs> oh, I'd open that club. I would dance. Yeah. yeah I would do some ranch wrestling. Yeah. Oh, oh, speaking of ranch, quick anecdote that is completely pertinent to this. Okay. I'm so going to start drinking. I was told by, or I, I to told a friend drinking. about this upcoming episode, and they told me that they have a close friend who worked at a pizza joint that I will not name in downtown Minneapolis that very frequently because they're open really, really late would deliver pizzas to a club. Well, many, many clubs, but specifically the Spearmint Rhino in Minneapolis, but like all the strip clubs in Minneapolis would order from this pizza joint after hours when they're like winding down and counting their money and whatever. Oh, cause they don't want to eat the buffet. I was going to say, why would you order food when you've got a buffet, but it's for the, the personnel. Okay. Yep, exactly. And so the the common term for ranch at this pizza joint became stripper sauce because all <laughs> of the all of the dancers in these local strip clubs around Minneapolis love ranch so much that with yeah. every order and it didn't matter which club, it wasn't like specific to one club, it was like Every single club ordered like seven extra sides of ranch, like per <laughs> pizza that they would order. Yes. So they, they just basically night. they just stopped calling it ranch altogether and started calling it stripper sauce. And I fucking love it. Um, I like it. How about I, I, mean, I rhino don't sauce. like ranch, but I think I could get behind ranch as a condiment if we only refer to it as stripper sauce. Ranch sauce. on bad pizza is real good. Yes. It is pretty good. It transforms yeah. the pizza. And I also mm, yeah. have a quick anecdote about strippers and like takeout food. My husband, Corey, used to work at uh, a deli, which I will also not name. Yep. But um, they serve that one of the items on their menu is like a loaded baked potato. Oh. And so like right Blow around. Your load. Right around 2 p.m. <laughs> Ew, Kenyon. There was a, the morning shift of dancers from a oh, yeah. nearby club would call for their lunch slash for them. It's like a late night snack, but they would get like loaded baked potatoes, extra cheese, extra sour cream, extra everything. And then he would just, like every time I delivered it, I just imagine them eating it and then like going and burying some dude's face right in their ass. Yes. Yeah. Well, it burns a lot of calories, all that dancing. You got to refuel. I'm starving and exhausted sitting and doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. workout. <laughs> uh, we speaking got nothing of, on these on these folks, these dancing folks. Speaking of fuel, uh, Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing for strip club crimes? Oh, y'all. Our amazing fan picker Jessica also sent us a bottle of... I am so happy because we could never afford this on our own. (laughs) I've never been able to buy this wine and I've always wanted to drink it. I had it at Christmas once. I mean, I've tried it before, but I've never like held my own bottle of Dom Perignon. 
<laughs> I've only stolen it from a nearby table of like douchey investor bros. Oh uh, yeah, fuck at them. Montauk. Great. Well, yes. that's the weirdest sentence that's you've ever said. Completely appropriate. Yep. Yeah. So this is literal champagne. It comes from the Champagne region of France, Kenyan's hometown. France. This is also this is Grande champagne. champagne. This is also a pretty <laughs> cool vintage. It's 2008, and according to the winemaker, quote, 2008 was dominated by gray overcast skies. A dom. Dominated. Dominated. <laughs> An exception in a decade characterized by bold, generous sunshine. Just when the harvest was getting underway, the weather conditions were finally perfect. Blue skies and prolonged north-northeasterly winds. The grapes were riper than anyone dared hope and had truly outstanding balance like a dancer. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a stretch. And like the a vines, dancer. Like a dancer. And the vines were in <laughs> perfect health. So it has a beautiful balance of acidity, concision, and aromatic purity um, with depth, density, and complexity. Like a stripper. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And according to uh, a, a sommelier by the name of James Suckling... <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. a good one. <gasps> I'm going to suckle at this review. He says, quote, this is the best Dom since 2002, a vintage with very restrained, powerful style that has been released non-sequentially after the 2009 vintage. This has a lighter stamp of highly curated, autolytic, toasty aromas and many uh, than many recent releases. Instead, this delivers super fresh and intense aromas of lemons, grapefruit, and blood orange peel. Incredible freshness here. The palate has, has a very smoothly delivered it. berry pastry thread with light sweet spices stone fruit and fine citrus fruit this really delivers drink now or hold i'm doing both are you just hot is that why you're just caressing yourself <laughs> no, with that bottle no 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 i'm horny no she's turned on yeah, exactly. i'm horny so we're gonna pop it open all right so as you can see i'm i'm removing the foil first as you should Mm-hmm. And then, as with any sparkling uh, wine beverage, it has this little cage. Oh God, this foil is getting me. Don't take so, out your eyeball. You I watch won't. Your so eyes. you're gonna you're gonna loosen the cage. Now, I would not recommend removing the cage because sometimes pulling off the cage can pull off the the the, the cork. Cheeks happen to me. Premature. Mm-hmm. If you do not have a towel, it happens or to towel, everyone. <laughs> Reach for your nearest Ufta t shirt. <laughs> oh my God, hold on. That you may or may not have picked up on a road trip to Badet, Minnesota from a small <laughs> roadside attraction. I have the magnet and the bumper sticker because mm-hmm. you took the last shirt of reasonable I size. I sure did. Yes. And she got the napkins. <laughs> the napkins. Oh my God. <laughs> and then once everything is secured, you want to twist the bottle. And ease it out. There she comes. Ready? Are you ready for this pop? I'm ready for the pop. Ready. Here we go. Oh. 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 Thick. Nice, nice pop. pop. <laughs> oh, my fucking that was God. A nice it one. smells like money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not jealous. It's fine. I'm drinking... A kind of Negroni gin and tonic crossover because I didn't have vermouth. I that hate works. vermouth. I'm drinking yeah. Joel Gott. I am going to have to make my partner pick me up later because I'm drinking this entire bottle and I'm going to get hammered. Yep. 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 Oh, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Oh, my God. You lucky bitch. Thank God this chair is fabric or I'd be sliding right up. Ick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Oh, Isn't no. it good? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice champagne glass. I literally don't own champagne flutes. I am the worst wine lover of all time. If, but you, don't says, get, if you don't get married for any other reason just to then register. The, the, the wedding gifts. Yeah. 
That's yeah. when you get all your adult shit. This is actually shit. a wine glass yeah. that a listener sent us, and it says partners in crime with I a little lady that. holding an axe. I'm it's also so cute. drinking a fan donated wine glass. It says mm. it's pronounced anus with my yes. name on the bottom. It's oh, I love those favorite. etched wine glasses. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the name of the person who gave them to us. I'm so sorry. But, we but also you. we want more because this is yeah. my favorite wine glass. <laughs> yeah. We're going to each need a set. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <laughs> moving on, Lucy, <laughs> what is our background and maybe psych for strip club crimes? Mm-hmm. Well, I was just so excited about this topic because I love strippers. Me too. I love mm-hmm. strip clubs. I love them. I love strippers. I'm jealous, and I can't wait for this whole segment. Yeah. I also had my first experience with male strippers at a bachelorette party that I planned a couple of months ago. I only, only. I got to say, stick with the ladies. I (laughs) only make transactions with with (laughs) boob boob holding strippers. Yeah. (laughs) I think, well, it was allegedly too of these male strippers, but I'm pretty sure one of them just like owed the other one 50 bucks and just like tagged <laughs> along. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Send, he, send the pictures or put the pictures on the drive. We'll put them on the blog because they are priceless. It's not, and I'm truly not trying to body shame. However, <laughs> not only was but. this man seemingly unequipped <laughs> He was wearing, like, regular, like, kind of ripped boxer briefs and, like, black ankle (laughs) socks. Old blasted out underwear. He was just a dude. He was a dude off the streets. I was was, so confused. He was not a stripper. He was definitely just Just a guy. A tagger alonger. He was a tagger alonger. Yeah. (laughs) Well, he had a really firm ass, though. your home. I let him do a lot of things I probably shouldn't have done. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I kissed a girl that night. (laughs) I got real turned on. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, (laughs) bachelorette parties are so fun. Okay. So also called exotic (laughs) dancers or just dancers or adult entertainers. So modern Americanized strippers minimize contact with customers and take off their clothes a lot faster as opposed to the tease part of a strip tease, like more of a burlesque, like artsy where they're kind of dancing and it's a slow thing. Get to the tits. Here in America, (sighs) you rip that shit off. Ain't nobody Mm -hmm. got time for that. And then you collect Mm -hmm. your dollar bills. Uh, Yeah, so strippers also utilize poles as a prop to do more acrobatic moves, again, as opposed to, like, artsy, burlesque, like... You mean this? You Mm -hmm. know. Venus in furs. Yeah. And that is not to imply that, like, strippers can't be artistic with their craft, because they absolutely can. Mm -hmm. It's just a different ball game than a a classic burlesque, like, tease. Truth. Mm -hmm. So we got a couple of... uh, uh, verbiage for you to learn some uh, what's it called when you learn new words vocabulary vocabulary <laughs> <laughs> what's that word oh yeah vocabulary we're off to a great start <laughs> House dancers work for a particular club or franchise while feature dancers have their own celebrity they possibly even have a manager to help them book shows and porn stars like current as well as like retired or like edge of retirement porn stars also often perform as featured dancers. And if you've seen The Deuce on HBO, you know what I'm talking about. We will also get to it because the porn stars as featured dancers shtick has to do with my case. Thank God. I was hoping that Mm -hmm. my background in psych would connect to anything that we were going to talk about later. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot to talk about. I kind of went down a rabbit hole. And uh, yeah, I just picked up what I thought was were fun facts, including male dancers weren't really a thing until the 1970s. And while most strippers are female, both sexes frequently perform in kind of bisexual contexts. And if you as a woman have been to a strip club where it's primarily female dancers, you've probably gotten that impression as well. I think the only a lot of attention as a woman in a strip club, or at least you did 
12 years ago last time Especially I went. Especially yeah. if you exclusively drink white Russians. Oh, yeah. That top shelf shit. Yeah. <laughs> they know and you got money. It turns out. We're very much aware <laughs> that there are more than two genders. So oh, yeah. Both sexes is like from the research, but all sexes. Yeah. Don't perform. don't at me. There are also yeah. a lot of like LGBTQIA plus uh dance like exotic dancers out there. So you know, I just did it, it, we could have gone way into it. But I do want to point out something that I found in my research which was interesting that uh female dancers uh, usually kind of go dance and try to get tips from men who look wealthy or oh, women we'll get to it. or <laughs> women who just appear open and friendly with like open body language and like a nice smile. Like sex is mm-hmm. not a th- is not a thing, but there is definitely like a gendered response by sh- by dancers to their different like gendered clientele which i thought was sort of it's interesting one of well, yeah. probably the number one reason i love going to the strip club so much is because i love attention <laughs> yeah and i will and <laughs> always have no i will shell out for the like the VIP upfront seats. It's called Pervert Row, and we'll get I to it. I will shell out for Pervert <laughs> Row, and I will go to the ATM with the 50% ATM fees if I run out of cash. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I think the only time, well, the first time I went to a strip club and it was female dancers and I was sitting in the front row, I was also the DD, which, like, thanks, oh, guys. Oh. You two were both there. I remember. Oh. It was Deja well, Vu that was in the, Minneapolis. Yeah, oh, with yeah. Jessica. We were like, yeah, that was. we were young. We were babies. Wet t-shirt yeah. night. Wet t-shirt night. That's the night. only time I've ever been. Well, Also, the Vu has hot dogs, and I am here for it. Well, I was enjoying myself, and I, whatever. I was like tipping the girls and whatever, and one of them came up to me and just twisted my nipples real hard through my shirt. Then I was like, honey, I'm sober and I just, I don't like that. And I have tender nipples (laughs) just in general. It's just not working (laughs) for me. But can I I order a hot dog, please? (laughs) And also the reason the Vu can serve food is because they're not full nude. They're topless. So they have to wear a G-string. Can't get your vagina near the hot dog. It differs from state to state, but I would imagine as is a logical response like by the mm-hmm. law that if it's a full nude club you probably shouldn't have a buffet nearby nope not that like the little g-strings will do much to prevent cross-contamination it's not no. like an n95 mask <laughs> jock strap <laughs> we'll get the to pubes it in but also what are pubes when you're a we'll get to it oh right. yeah never seen a stripper with pubes i want to mm-hmm. be the first stripper with pubes i like mm-hmm. pubes my bush is unrelenting right now. <laughs> Moving on. Um, okay, so as of 2005, <laughs> <laughs> the global strip club industry was about $75 billion. Uh, mm-hmm. billion. Mm-hmm. In 2019, the size of the industry in the U.S. alone was estimated to be $8 billion dollars, generating around 19% of the total gross revenue of legal adult entertainment. So like, it's an important component. There are also about 4,000 strip clubs in the United States. I'm taking that number pre-COVID. Again, we'll get to it. That seems really low. Yeah, but think about how much of the U.S. is like smaller towns. Small Mm -hmm. and prude. Yeah, Yeah. that's true. Also like, smaller towns wherein the city council might not approve like a subway, a gas station and a strip club, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So back to Kenyon's point, fun fact, some States have prohibited complete nudity. So like no vag and others have prohibited female nipples. Pretty but sure a man can fine. take a, a, off his shirt. Got it. Uh-huh. And even more absurd, other states have or have in the past implemented a six foot rule, and this is pre social distancing. So, like the oh, nerve, can't ahead get within of six the feet. curve. The nerve, but also ahead of the curve, but also the but nerve. Who wants to go to a strip curve. club and stay six feet away? Not get a lap dance, but I guess like, could that? have been put in place to protect the dancer or can we yeah. only assume 
Because, like, I get that. Like, no touching. I can see the place for that. Six yeah. feet is kind of a long ways. And I feel point taken, absolutely. But as I read more about what these, how these women make their money, it's not by, like, not making physical contact with their clients. No, I know. A lot more money in the champagne room. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, I it, did not, I didn't realize when we all went when we were 18. I didn't realize how close you actually got in They sit in your row. lap. It's yeah. called a lap well, dance. No, I knew about lap dances, but I kind of thought was that was like... I was Or someone yeah. motorboated me. My right. face was in the glitter. Oh, yeah. You are you are as far from the stage as I am from my computer monitor right now. Yeah, and there's I didn't just know that. crevasse. Pervert just, gy- just gyrating crevasse it's just, just a, right there. It's a lot of skin that you're just not used to seeing, like the side mm. of the thigh. I love side thigh. I love skin. If yeah, I could go into a strip club skin, as a patron yeah. and take off my clothes, I would do it. But I don't want to. I don't want to take any money away from from the hardworking yeah, ladies course. up on stage. Yes, yeah, it's really altruistic of you not yeah. to strip in a strip club. You're welcome. You have serious. Problems. attention issues okay yeah i'm fine <laughs> oh god okay so however some dancers are down for a trip to the champagne room or the vip room for a private lap dance or grinding on your dockers till you cream yourself which is called an Whoa. rj or a rub <laughs> job <laughs> oh but other and aspects that's perfectly of the- legal e- oh yeah mm, well if you're in a private room who's gonna tattle Obviously, though, like people are probably jizzing in their pants at the strip club all You're the right. time without all much. Time. Yeah. So, like, how could you even regulate that? Right. It's a lot easier to be like, "Hey, don't whip your no dog hands. out and start." Well, I think, I think she meant if there's like a six foot rule in a given state. I if you wanted an RJ, et cetera, you'd probably have to go into a private room where there's a bouncer watching to make sure that everything was consensual. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. also, like, no cameras, no cops. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No body, no crime. So as my next sentence is, um, so in the VIP room or the champagne room, whatever, there can be activities related to other aspects of the sex industry that isn't always legal in the U.S. But honestly, you do you as long as you're being safe. If you're fairly compensated and if all parties are consenting, who the fuck cares? Preach. Do what you want to do. Sex work is mm-hmm. real work, as we absolutely promoted on the show. Mm-hmm. So here's a little bit of history for us from Wikipedia. Herstory. Herstory. Stripstory. Herpstory? <laughs> Stripstory or herstory? Clapstory. Cl- the clapstory. <laughs> Clap your handstory. Dripstory. Okay. Drip, okay. Dripping. <laughs> the term strip tease was first recorded in 1938. Though stripping in the sense of women removing clothing to sexually excite men seems to go bla- go back at least 400 years, I would argue a All lot time. further than yeah. that. Uh, how about when was <laughs> yeah. the birth of man? <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. when yeah. women taking their clothes off began. Yeah. Well, scientifically, we have to go act. by recorded, you know, history. But and then at least clothing was invented, stripping was invented. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You take off your animal furs. Oh God! And right. your and your palm frond. You are too <laughs> horny today. I okay. am gonna go home and only wear a palm frond in Animal Crossing. Yes. <laughs> you can't get naked in Animal Crossing. I know. It won't I've already let you. written an email to Nintendo. <laughs> a strongly I worded wear- letter. I want to wear like worded. just my empty can. Mostly because <laughs> yesterday I spent way too long building my outdoor bar, Munderitaville, and wanted to put on a sensual <laughs> outfit for its opening night. And all I had were like kimonos and overalls to choose from in my fucking closet. <laughs> Yeah, like loafers, striped socks. So many loafers and recycled boots made out of shit I fished out of a river. <laughs> I don't understand what's even happening. Please this fucking don't game. even start. If you haven't already started Animal Crossing, don't because your it will went. absorb your whole life. It's your new I, life. I had to wake I up early this Scrabble. morning and I played till two in the morning. Two in yeah. the morning. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm concerned. All right. I'm not a video game person. This no. is how... It's not a video game, though. Addicting it is. It's just escapism. It's escapism. <sighs> it's easily accessible escapism. You don't even have to have ever known what a video game was to successfully play it. It's that easy. And therein lies well, the problem. It's that it's trial the and error. of Nintendo Switch. Yeah. You, Kenyon's Mahjong is my new Animal Crossing. Ye- yep. I've given up saying. Mahjong. What? I hit, I, I hit level 1,000 and Zach bought me a bottle of champagne and we drank it and celebrated when I hit level 1,000. And then your husband I tried enables for like, you and I'm upset. Isn't that cute? And he was <laughs> like, he went out. This was, it was this months ago when we could still buy alcohol and go out into the world. And I hit level 1,000. He was so proud of me and he went and got a champagne, a bottle of champagne. But then Kill I haven't it. been able to get past it, so then I gave up, and now I do Scrabble, and I, I can't, crush. I can't tell when, if that's uh, supportive or like tamping alarming? down your desire for mahjong. Was it what your choice mean? to quit? Did you consent to quitting mahjong? Oh, that was entirely my choice. Oh, he okay. ce- he just celebrated my hitting level one thousand, and then I I'm got frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, my cruel, my cruel husband yep. celebrating my mahjong wins. I thought I he was like, to him. "Cool, now you can be done." <laughs> no, no, no. I want to no. talk to him. I'm gonna have words with that man. <laughs> All right, it's moving very on. Very supportive. So, in Thomas Otway's comedy *The Soldier's Fortune*, written in 1681, a character says, "Quote: Be sure they be lewd, drunken, stripping whores." So stripping, well? that's the first time stri- stripping oh, was Oh, okay. Used. I was like, where is this quote from and why does this matter? It's from Thomas got Otway's it. comedy, The Soldier's Fortune, written in 1681. Got, got it. Got, okay, got Ever it. Ever heard of it? Ever heard of it? No. <laughs> there Haven't. are also accounts from 1720s Germany talking about princes being entertained by naked women dancing to music. So that's like where music came in. Mm. And in well, the U.S. Also, um... Oh. oh my god, I'm so white. What's it called? Somebody come get her. Belly dancing. dancing like a belly dancer. I'm in love with a stripper. Belly she dancing. And she and- oh, belly dancing. Well, yeah, okay. Oh, so my next yeah. sentence. In the U.S., strip teases were common in traveling carnivals and burlesque theaters in the late 1800s. And I didn't write this in my notes, and I'm not sure it's entirely factually correct, but I did read Devil in the White City within the yeah. last two years. And yeah. I seem to remember that the Maharishi, right? The woman, the woman, I don't, I think she was like English or something, but she like pretended to be Indian. And then she had this like belly dance and she was at the World's Fair with H.H. H. Holmes. And that mm-hmm. was like the first like burlesque kind of a, mm-hmm. like a belly dance kind of a thing. A sure. Western appropriation mm-hmm. of. Middle Eastern cultural dance form. Yeah, sure. Didn't age well, but I'm pretty sure that was <laughs> one of the first like instances of of belly dancing in a, the U.S. In the West. Yeah. yeah. And now it's exclusively at Renaissance fairs. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I hope we get to go to Renaissance fairs this fall. Mm-hmm. My Girl Scout troop took a belly dancing class. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird. What kind of patch was that? <laughs> we did the weirdest shit. Yeah, because your mom I, was in charge. I was going to say, because your fucking mother was <laughs> your know. troop leader. I know. Okay, so I've got some stripper lingo for us, a few a few terms of which we've already gone over. Okay, an air dance is a lap dance with no contact. A rock is a strip club patron who, who nurses their drinks and watches dancers without tipping. So, like, don't do that. Ugh. I don't care if you nurse your drinks, like... Okay, but then you, because you're not ordering with frequency, you should be compensating by tipping. Right. Yeah. And also don't watch the dancers without tipping. If you're going to sit in the corner and be a creep about it, just throw them some money, please. That's like going to a drive-in movie and parking Mm -hmm. on the other side of the fence and just peeking over and watching the film without paying. Disgusting. You scoundrel. So a George Uh is a generous tipper, and a whale Uh is a big tipper who spends a lot of time in the VIP room. Uh It is goals for me to be a whale at a strip club. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> well, so you got to put the time your in. Patreon support. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need that vaccine quick. <laughs> yeah, I demand we'll a COVID vaccine it. so <laughs> I can get back into the club. Honey, we'll get to it. So this was my favorite one called a Mick dance, which is a dance done without enthusiasm or creativity. <laughs> but uh, but, but, but uh, I'm loving it. Just like, yeah, how was your day? <laughs> oh, that is so good. I You're love nailing it. it. A Mick dance. Oh. oh, that's good. I like that. A game boy refers to a male patron's genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Could you play Animal Crossing on it? <laughs> um, Without your Game Boy, now it's I called cross. a Switch. It's called a Switch. <laughs> Flip that Switch, honey. Oh. oh, oh my God! A vulture is a dancer who hangs out by the door to like grab the new arrivals. All right, I like it. We talked about Pervert Row. A bird Uh dog is a bouncer who watches the VIP rooms, I think because they need to be, like, ultra attentive. Sure. Because, like, that's kind of probably where the girls are in the most potential danger. Women, people, dancers. I I feel like I need to share that while we were talking about this, I got a spam text message from... Perform when it really matters. Get it up, guaranteed, and a link. Your phone is listening to you. Turn on. Yeah, it's definitely iTunes. listening to me. I'm not kidding. That text just came through right now, five seventeen p.m. <laughs> that is. Oh, that's creepy. It's I'm gonna funny. Write back. It's, nice. it's funny. It's funny. You're combined with your phone case. It's just covered in tits. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love your phone case. Me too. So a beater is a dancer who can't stay on the beat while performing. So like me, just <laughs> horrible oh. coordination. <laughs> and Except for what it. was that one song that you rocked the fuck out to? I was in twerking Baudet. to Come On Eileen. <laughs> yeah. I was on the pool table twerking. And for whatever reason, it just worked out for me. And the it only has a person very to- strong and robust 4-4 four, four time signature. Mm-hmm. You but really we, just But we started slow, so it was like, mm, come on, I lean to lose. Right. And then it was like You were just on it. It was the highlight of my life. It was pretty incredible. It was also three in the afternoon. It was. <laughs> a juice bar is a club that doesn't serve booze, which exists Ugh. fairly. You know, you don't want a bunch of drunk men going in there and being l- leechy. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I can see it in like Salt Lake City. I can see it both ways because as I've previously stated, strip clubs are more fun when you're drunk. But I think that probably patrons tend to be a little more grabby when they're drunk. So like mm. oh for sure in place. terms of safety it makes a lot of sense it just doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of entertainment Profit. and <laughs> and money yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh, okay a white knight is a customer who thinks they can save a dancer from their horrible life as a stripper. <laughs> Can we just stop assuming that every single stripper is just like it, trapped in this okay, profession? But we we can bounce it off of the next term, which is a hurl story, which is an emotional story that a dancer tells a customer to get more tip money. I used to do that shit when I was a waitress. I kept pictures of my sister's kids in my server book to pretend that they were mine. <laughs> oh my god! To get god. more money. Oh, oh yeah, it probably. worked. Uh, Every time. I was a single mom. The kids were at home with grandma. We live in a one-bedroom apartment. (laughs) And I have been on my feet for 12 hours. And I'm pregnant now. No, (laughs) I never did that. These dogs are barking. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So chumming the waters is tipping generously at the beginning of the night to get more attention from the dancers. Makes sense. Mm. Booty dust is glitter. No. <laughs> Zoned is the glazed expression a stripper gives during a performance when they're tired, bored, or intoxicated. So again, Perfect. like, how's your day? Yeah, mm-hmm. you could be zoned and give a mick dance. They're not mm-hmm. looking at your face, most likely. It doesn't matter. Last what but not least, last but not least, making it hail is yep. throwing coins at dancers. So like, don't do don't it. Don't do that. That nope. should be not allowed. Is that allowed? 
Mm, I mean, my you club, can definitely my chicken kick, strip club. <laughs> it's not like it's illegal, but you will get kicked out of the club for doing that. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so I just have it's super fucking disrespectful, and also, ow. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had a handful of change thrown at me in a misogynist. Uh, so, quasi assault thing when I was walking through my former neighborhood. I was walking, mm-hmm. minding my own business, and a car of high school boys drove by and threw a bunch of change at me and screamed at me that I was gonna get raped. Good lord! Yeah, great. I moved. Fucking patriarchy. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with people? Okay, so I I'm gonna try. That. I know. I ca- I think I called you crying. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to blast through the rest of this because it is important and interesting. Exotic dancers are typically classified as independent contractors, which means they don't get paid sick leave, they have no health benefits, they're prone to extreme job insecurity and unstable pay, and they have to pay the club a certain amount for renting their stage. It's like a nightly fee. That comes up in my case. So so like other service industry workers, they're kind of fucked as far as state closures due to coronavirus. However, I found an incredible article from Rolling Stone about how out-of-work dancers are coping in these COVID times. So here's a quote from the article. Also, and this applies to anybody in a tipped industry, this is one of the reasons why it is so important to claim your tips as like if you can claim every penny. You should, because then if you do end up in a position where you have to apply for unemployment, yeah. your your taxes are actually reflecting what you were actually making. It's also better if you want to buy a car, you want to buy a home, like things like that. But I do mm-hmm. understand it's really hard to let go of that cash to your taxes. That's really rough. So I get it. Yeah. yeah. Heard. Okay. So here's from the article. Quote, when fears of the COVID-19 pandemic first started circulating, Brody Grody... <laughs> a stripper in Portland, Oregon. I don't know if that's her real name. I kind of hope it is. What Brody. was it? What was that from Never Been Kissed? Gross Josie Grossy. Josie yeah. Grossy. <laughs> Brody Grody. Brody Grody. <laughs> <sighs> saw her I really saw watch her Never Been income Kissed. dwindle to about half of what it usually was. People were scared, she says. They were going out less. They were buying fewer lap dances and sitting at the stage less because they were worried about getting too close to us. Then, when Governor Kate Brown announced last week, this this, this article is from March 23rd, I believe, so a while ago. When the governor announced last week she'd be shutting down all restaurants and bars in Oregon, Grody's (laughs) Grody's already dwindling income was wiped out completely, she says. We really needed to step it up and start hustling. Grody's boss, the owner of the club that was called Lucky Devil Lounge, and his name was Sean Bolden, stumbled on a solution. Following Governor Brown's edict, Bolden tweeted that though this restaurant slash strip club would have to close, they were working on how to keep their employees working, and he joked that he would provide a service where the dancers would deliver food topless. Oh, my God. When cus- to your house? Well, you wait and see. In that March? Listen. In the Midwest? Listen. That it's not the Midwest. Safe. It's Oregon. Oh. oh, well. They got a very they got humidity. When cus- still north. When customers right? started asking him if he would deliver no. to their area, I was like, holy shit, this might be something that actually works. From oh, this no. tweet, Boober Eats was born. <laughs> <laughs> Boobers. Oh, wow. Innovation. Oh, God. The future is now. I love an entrepreneur. For a $30 delivery fee, a sum sum split between the club employees, customers- Not enough. No. That's just the delivery fee that does not include tip or charging of the food. Mm -hmm. Customers can order a burger and fries or a salad or steak or any variety of dishes to their home- where two dancers will show up accompanied by a driver slash security guard equipped with masks, gloves, and hand sanitizers. The dancers deliver food to the customer's doorstep within the six foot guidelines, six feet guidelines established by the CDC. Though the initial plan was to have them deliver food topless, quote, at a certain point, we decided we probably shouldn't be sending topless girls to random people's houses. So we're doing it a little more PC, says Bolden. The toned down version is thus. Clad in nipple pasties, the women, <laughs> the women walk up to a customer's door, leave the food on the doorstep, then take off their sweaters and 
bounce around, though what <gasps> that looks like depends on the skill set of the dancer. So, for example, Grody says that she just flexes one breast at a time. I That's have her trick. A- I have a friend here in Minneapolis who, and I know I've talked about this before. Uh, she goes by Queenie Von Curves and she does like flaming booby tassels oh. and she can spin those suckers so beautifully. She also has this really great move where she like takes off a silk glove with her butt cheeks. Ooh, that's fun. She's, she's so talented and unbelievable. Bottomless anyway, talent right there. <laughs> t- bottomless. But can you imagine bottomless. having to do that? 20 times a day while delivering a burger and fries after a loaded baked potato for lunch (laughs) (laughs) covered in stripper sauce. (laughs) Um, Honestly, sign me up. (laughs) Obviously this is gendered, but like (laughs) gender fluidity aside, men are so beholden to their horniness. (laughs) Oh yeah. yeah. It's kind of (laughs) pathetic. It's, Men and Amanda. Well, yeah, but I have like <laughs> an iota of self control, unlike <laughs> men. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Like, why? Literal wars have started over men's horniness. Yeah. Like, what a prison. It, yeah. Wow. What is true freedom? <laughs> They'll never I don't know. know dude. No. <laughs> Nuts. All Nuts. right. So Bolden, the owner of this strip to go thing, also launched Food to Go Go, where cars can pull up in the parking lot, order food, and watch four dancers in pasties and shorts perform under a tent while they wait for their food. And Love that, it. that costs $30 per car plus $10 per passenger. And the money, again, is split evenly among the staff. There's a club in Las Vegas offering essentially a 10-minute drive-up strip show for $100 per patron. So it's like a fucking car wash. I would go to yeah. this so hard. I would, too. Can you imagine going to this, like, having a, someone in your quarantine community, literally the quarantine community being somebody who lives in your home with your you. Your household, who could, yeah. Who uh-huh. could be the DD while you hit up a drive through margarita stand like the one we went to in Texas. I do love and the drive through margarita stand. Roll so through good. one of these stripper car washes. I would be so happy. I'm calling the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he can do about it, but I'm calling him. I don't know when the last time either of you have gone through a car wash like it's a so like fun. a cool one but they right, have like, like the noodles and the really cool soaps. lights and colored yeah. so- there's like disco fucking lights in car washes now if it's you so could fun safely drive on molly that would be my covid mm. activity oh mm. we'll make bill drive you honey mm. oh shit i have a partner you have and, a then, put a, and partner. then put a blindfold on him so he doesn't get to see the strippers Oh, I mean just the car wash. But if we if we go to the drive through <laughs> strip area, he oh, can see I the was strippers, talking about car honey. washes. <laughs> that time. I did go to a strip club with an ex-partner my on D- a drunken... My DD has a blindfold on. I don't think that'll yeah, work very yeah. well. <laughs> I did go to... I went to a strip club with an ex-partner and we enjoyed copious couples lap dances and we had so much fun. And I was like super in the mood and I was like, okay, babe, let's go home. And I had biked there. <laughs> to the strip club. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So I don't know. So we go outside. I get on my bike to go home. And I'm like, okay, babe, get a cab. I'll meet you back home. And he's like, okay. So I leave assuming I saw a cab pulling up. I assumed he had gotten in it. I'm focusing on the road and biking home. I get yeah. home. He's not there. I wait like oh, no. 20 minutes. He's not there. 40 minutes. He's not there. Then finally I call him and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Where are you? I was ready to have he sex had, with you. Right. He had turned around and gone back into the strip club <laughs> by himself. <laughs> <laughs> and left me at home <laughs> naked and waiting. <laughs> I was livid. Did you lace? He saw somebody left. I paid. 
paid for like 90% of those lap dances. <laughs> he was like, okay, babe, saw you bike off. I'll meet you at home. Watch me bike into the dark and turn around and went back into the club. Oh my God. Did he at least get his hand stamped so he could get back in? Oh yeah. I don't think he paid the cover twice. I also know the bouncer, so I'm sure we didn't pay a cover in the first place. Oh my fucking God. Okay, babe, I'll meet you at home. One of the biggest fights we've ever had. Yeah. 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 I'm guessing you're not still with this person. I also know exactly who this was. We didn't make it. (laughs) (laughs) Did you sleep with him when he finally got home? No. What if you had like covered yourself in sushi? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just something really involved. involved. <laughs> I just can't move. Really I'm elaborate. Dialing the, I'm Siri, dialing the phone call with my toe. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> call Ben. <laughs> hey, Siri. Hey, ben. Ben. <laughs> Siri, call babe. Oh, God. Wait. No. Siri, don't call babe. Oh, shit. <laughs> you, know, you gotta be careful when you're making that joke. <laughs> Anyway, we broke up, but not for a while. But I did not oh put out God. for like a week after that. <laughs> so hot. It's so hot. So hot in here. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, strip show car wash drive through. I would pay any amount. It'd here be for it. so fun. Yep. Mm. Okay, so there are also virtual strip clubs, of course, which are less expensive. Uh, The one that I read about was about $20 per month for a membership. And you can leave tips for dancers directly and also pay to chat with them personally on some platforms. There's a real-life club in New York City called Die Happy Tonight, which has implemented VR lap dances. Like, So you can get a 360-degree view of the whole strip club and also like move around this it's animal crossing it's strip club animal crossing the future is now yes Mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay them in bells actually don't pay them in (sighs) bells yeah bells are fucking worthless moving forward though strip clubs kenyan Kenyan. (laughs) what you want don't worry about don't worry about it start investing in turnips kenyan there's a (laughs) black market for that shit i haven't had any turnips yet we gotta i gotta go okay Honey, moving I forward, will walk you through it. <laughs> Strip clubs could see a permanent change or permanent changes in the way that they operate. So, for example, requiring all patrons to wear gloves and masks, uh, limited <laughs> capacities. I know, right? I love it. Limiting and then panning out tiny gloves for their crotches. I mean, tiny <laughs> masks. Oh, ick! Just like a <laughs> a condom and then like a mask for their balls. <laughs> Like, I know you're not going to give me COVID through, like, air puffing out of your penis hole, but just put this on. We just, don't we, know that. It can never be too safe. We did. We yeah. cl- didn't we clear up the fart thing? That's right. You can, can get COVID from farts. You can farts. get COVID from farts. So dick queefs and regular queefs, I'm sure. So really, these mm-hmm. ladies, especially after a loaded baked potato, should be wearing some sort of mask. Anal mask. Ass, ass mask. Anal An mask. Ass mask suit. <laughs> Corey this came is up off with the fucking rails. PPE. Corey came up P- with a PPE P- that's in. It's an ascot, but he'll call it a mascot. <laughs> and you can like tuck it up around your face, you know, for those black tie events you're going to. It's just a scarf. That is a scarf. <laughs> your husband invented a scarf. Congratulations. He came to it independently, though. In fairness. Mascot. <laughs> and also so the word generous. mascot already exists. With a K though? <laughs> okay. Oh All right. my God. <laughs> okay. So other measures might be limiting numbers of dancers working at all. So like sharing the poles, the dressing rooms, whatever, and also no touching. So no lap dances, no motorboating, champagne room shenanigans, whatever. Essentially, the industry will have to adjust to fewer customers having less fun and dancers making less money. Yeah, in in -hmm. these unprecedented times, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the only thing I know for sure is that Seabreeze Water Park in upstate New York is taking every possible precaution to bring family summer fun. They're here for you. (laughs) We're in this together. Together. (laughs) All 
right. Should we hear, speaking of, should we hear a quick word from our sponsors? <laughs> Let's do it. Care Of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you long term because Mm -hmm. both are important. Truly. Care Of offers hassle-free vitamin and supplement delivery to your Mm. door. Like all of our favorite sponsors, no pants required. Yup. Care Of can make taking your vitamins and supporting your health goals attainable. Mm -hmm. They also offer quality that you can see and taste. Care Of is focused on the quality, science, and research that goes into each of their products and recommendations. And I love how much of an effort they put into helping you understand what's in these vitamins as well. Mm -hmm. Can we also talk about how they have a new line of skin and hair, like boosting Oh. Vitamins, the skin and hair collection. Oh, I need all of it. It's incredible. And it helps you work on your beauty goals from all the angles with a combination of targeted ingredients for hair, skin, and nails. So I have like really brittle nails and really thin hair. Mm-hmm. And I do have problems with acne. So like, in you know, obviously drinking a ton of water and maintaining a healthy diet are really helpful with things like that. But also taking the right vitamins as a supplement to like, actually meet those goals is really great. And that's one of the things that I love about Care Of's super easy online quiz. So you take a short online quiz and answer some questions about your diet, your health goals, even if that means I want to like brighten up my skin. I want to get better sleep. I want, you know, I have thin or dull hair. Like these are things that you can answer in your quiz And then you talk about your lifestyle, your health goals, and then Care Of recommends a list of vitamins and supplements that are specifically for your health needs and your goals. It's like having a personalized vitamin specialist at your fingertips. And before I discovered Care Of, as everyone knows, I was taking like basically Flintstones vitamins. (laughs) Like I did not know what I was doing. I was like, oh, it's a gummy. This looks fun. No, you're a real adult human now. I'm a real adult human who is actually taking vitamin packs that are made for what I want them to do. Mm. And it's pretty great. So for 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the code GALS50. That's G-A-L-S-5-0. Again, for 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code GALS50 and treat your whole bod from the inside out. Oh my gosh, treat it. Ah, You deserve it. Treat it. All right. So this is one of the crazier stories I have ever done. Okay. I'm so excited. There's so much to it that we couldn't possibly cover all of it, but I will give you resources at the end to explore more. This is like up there with the dolphin story. What? What? Mm-hmm. Dang. I'm Just not buckle. ready. But I'm yeah. halfway through this bottle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this story begins uh, yep. with a man okay. who calls yep. himself Tarzan. No. <laughs> no, that's not Always how this a good story begins. Thing to name <laughs> oneself. <laughs> and is he white? He is. Oh, His yeah. real name is Ludwig Feinberg. <laughs> Van Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> Ludwig Feinberg. <laughs> so I could see I could see how the 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 natural mm-hmm. next step would be Tarzan. Be Tarzan. 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 Yeah. Tarzan. Okay. Yeah. Right. right. I I it tracks. I yeah. follow it. Mm. So Ludwig Tarzan grew up in Odessa, Ukraine. And eventually began working there as a dentist. An odentist. <laughs> An odontist. <laughs> An odentist. An odentrontist. <laughs> okay, we're so done. <laughs> In 1980, he moved to the Russian mecca of Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, which is a very Russian neighborhood of Brooklyn. It's where all the like, Eastern European mobsters live and like the clubs are really fun because it's like a bunch of Svetlana's in like fur coats and like vodka table service. Yes. Yes. 
There is a restaurant called Irina's in Des Moines. Amanda yes. knows. It's it's so, so good. fun. Yeah. The it's Russian like that vodka bar. Tacky yeah. lighting and yes. just so much vodka. And if you show up without a fur muff, you're yeah. the one who looks out of place. You're yeah. the weirdo. Yeah. Ugh, That's yeah. my kind of bar. Also, I yeah. want some pierogies immediately right now i'm texting so, william to yeah. make pierogies. we need to once all this shit is over we need to go to brighton beach in the winter done for the for the muffs for the anywhere muffs, for where the, i can find a good muff and pierogi i am there yeah. some yeah. tells me you're gonna dig up a lot of muffs in this story oh yeah okay, okay. so thrilled to finally be out of the restrictive ussr and in america where opportunities seemed limitless because there are no cats in America. In America. <laughs> oh my God, I love an American tale. And I just texted my boyfriend with no context. I want pierogies. <laughs> Make it work. There's enough context. Right? What other information does he need? That's Do a straightforward demand. Need. So, okay, Ludwig Tarzan gets out of uh, Ukraine goes to Brooklyn, <laughs> decides that the best way to make a name for himself besides the name Tarzan in his new home was <laughs> to leave dentistry behind and seek out a crime family in need of an enforcer. So he's like, fuck all this being a doctor bullshit. I want to join the mob. Mm-hmm. I've been watching okay. so much Sopranos. A same. This is like... A on plot your line. HBO account. I know because every time you've watched it before I've watched it, I have to start it over. <laughs> I'm just rewatching Game of Thrones. I've never watched The Sopranos, so I'll put that on my next Do list. It. It's really good. I it's had never really watched good. it either. It's so good. Okay, anyway. Um, and also, Zach and I used to live not far from Bada Bings in New Jersey. It's real. Ah, uh, Bada Bings. Bada Bings is real? Bada Bings is real on Route 22. Oh my god! Near the Olive Garden, I can't wait Anyone to travel who's ever again. Anyone been to Jersey knows that Bada Bing's is real. Mm. Okay, how dare you even ask? I've this only question. landed in New Jersey. That was enough. You're missing out. <laughs> okay, so this is exactly what he did. He links up with the Gambino family and spends several years intimidating anyone who ran afoul of the gang. So Tarzan specialized in arson but was also known to give the occasional beating if he felt the situation called for it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Sure. I mean, he's an enforcer. Um, I'm sure teeth got involved. I mean, he could pull them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. But then when his partner was murdered, Tarzan felt the violence of New York's criminal underworld was getting a little too close for comfort. Mm. So... Too he decided tempting for some of them. I just whacked my wine right <laughs> into my microphone. <laughs> Things are going well over here. I hit my teeth on my mic every recording. Thank God they have this big foam layer mm-hmm. so that that literally doesn't matter. Okay. So he took the money he had saved from his years working for the Gambinos and moved to where else? Miami, Florida. <gasps> Yes. Bienvenido a Miami. Mm. Mm-hmm. Here, he decided to open a strip club that he would name after his favorite film, Porky's. <laughs> That's a film? <laughs> yes, yes, honey. Have you never seen Porky's? I've and never the, even heard of Porky's. The plot is like a bunch of high schoolers go to a strip club in the Everglades and get, like, lose all their money it's a high it's school not, animal house kind of a thing. It's yeah, like a it's an, comedy, 80s, sweaty men. In, American Pie-esque yeah, type thing of with age. a strip club. Okay, yeah. I'll put that on my queue. I'll have yeah. that DVD you, delivered you from Netflix. To. You don't need yeah. to. It's a lot of 80s humor, if you know what I mean. Don't tell me what I need. And <laughs> also, you're probably right because you know me really well. And but I love the, you. In the movie, the strip club owner like cheats the customers out of their money. And that's what he oh, names his strip we'll club get after. To him. Okay. <laughs> that's not great marketing. What There's year a is, lot of that happening in my case. What year is this? 80s? 
a great question, and also, I don't know the answer. Also, who fucking knows what year is it now? What difference does it make? What even <laughs> matters? I forgot okay. how old I was the other day. Did oh, I tell this you this? Is the early, this is the early 90s because the USSR is, like, collapsing around them. Okay. But still, yeah. Porky's is fresh enough in most people's minds that that was a stupid fucking move. Whatever. It's Well, fine. did it on purpose. Okay. Oh, the yeah. club was extremely successful, bringing in about $175,000 in business each month. Although, who knows if that was like legit Reported dollar dollar bills business. From, <laughs> yeah, from, from the patrons or if it was just money laundering, but business. whatever. Business. Bi- it's business. <laughs> it, $175,000 a business. <laughs> a business, <laughs> one way or the other. So, and this is in part due to Tarzan's idea to have well known porn stars come in to do featured shows, like Lucy was saying. And one of these shows involved having patrons paying $5 each to drive remote control cars with dildos mounted on them into the porn actress's crotch region. There was also a VIP basement section of the club (laughs) that featured illegal slot machines. Nothing says VIP like a basement. Like a basement. I also have a basement (laughs) of porkies. Is how I'm going to refer to my garden level apartment. And also I'm going to start referring. (laughs) I'm going to start referring to my vagina as my featured illegal slot machine. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Put your coins in. Okay. Ooh, cha-ching. So the the <laughs> VIP basement, aka Amanda's uh, garden level apartment, uh, <laughs> had sex workers that charged around three hundred dollars an hour. Not bad. That's a business Not too. Not bad. Yeah. That's also a business. Get also, your money, this was, honey. You know, mm-hmm. a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. But surprise, surprise. Tarzan <laughs> did not leave organized <laughs> crime behind when he I left can't. Brooklyn. I know Tarzan. I can't get past he, Tarzan. He also has like long stringy hair. No. No. There are photos. There are photos on the drive yes. if you want to go check out Tarzan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I do want to go check out Tarzan. I'm picturing Ed from oh, 90 honey, Day Fiance. No. Yeah. Yes. Very. Pretty similar. I mean, no one they can look be Ed. Identical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he close. does. This is a Fabio Ed mashup. Yeah. Kenyon painted yeah. a very good picture for me to just very come up with Ed. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Ed. Big Ed. So Porky's became a notorious hangout for high profile mobsters in the Miami area. One former bartender at the club characterized it as, quote, the kind of place where you could get killed. <laughs> <laughs> Got stabbed here once. Would, would recommend. Go back. <laughs> would go back. <laughs> the McDonald's hobo <laughs> Got stabbed here. Would go back. <laughs> That's my favorite Yelp review that has ever been penned. I, I, I oh imagine just someone at like a beautiful oak writing desk with a quill. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Got stabbed here once. Would go back. <laughs> Somebody please make us an like embroidery, whatever. Yeah. Tchotchke. <laughs> Got stabbed here. Please. Would go back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Three of them. <laughs> We yeah. don't share well. <laughs> no, no, we don't share, period. <laughs> okay, so this is one of, uh, there's so many good parts. Okay, the manager of Porky's, Fat Tony Galliota. <laughs> <laughs> also, there are pictures on the drive, and he's basically <gasps> Fat Joe. Oh, the rapper? What's love? <gasps> got yeah. to do, Fat got Joe. to do with it. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Fat Joe mixed with like some sort of rodent. Yeah. He's got yeah. he's got mousy in a fur vibes. coat, which is very fat Joe of him. Yeah, I love him. So Fat Tony remembers that he would usually end his <laughs> night, quote, picking up broken teeth, pieces of <laughs> torn skin, and cleaning up blood. Pieces of torn skin. What does that even pieces mean? I think shit got 
she got rowdy at Porky's. So he's running sunshine cleaners. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. He's a crime scene cleaner. And that coat he's wearing is certified biohazard wear. <laughs> is a crime scene. Can confirm. Yeah, that is a crime. <laughs> Though, I don't like the fur coats that are like two or more completely different colors of fur, like to- totally Stri- different animals. Striped. It's a lot going on. Yeah. And then this one's hooded and has like a fake silk lining that's real shiny and looks not great. And, and he has, if if... My recollection serves. He has like a tiny bucket hat. Oh yeah, yeah. like an itty bitty fedora. Yeah. A little, a yeah. little, yeah, like a fubu bucket hat. It's also yeah. she felt she tiny. There's a lot yeah. going on. Yeah, it looks on. felted. So many textures. Yeah. All right. There's so much more. We got to move on. Okay. This case is really long, but really good. It's a good photo, <laughs> so, though. <laughs> yeah. So Tarzan carried two guns with him at all times when he was inside his own club. <laughs> That is how he rowdy felt that she safe. got. He felt that yeah. safe, yeah. So the FBI soon caught on to Porky's, uh, <laughs> and they began bugging the booths, I, I believe, like, you know, on the main floor of the uh-huh. club. Okay. Mm-hmm. They feared that with the popularity of the strip club, Tarzan could serve as a catalyst for Russian mobsters to establish connections with Cuban mobsters in Miami Ooh. and form a sort of criminal supergroup. Yeah. Ooh, the in sync of criminals. Mm. Mm-hmm. A crossover. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. A mashup. A mashup. And that's. Pretty damn close to what did eventually happen, but probably in a much stranger, more complex way than the FBI could have ever envisioned. Thank God. I love when you titillate and then really deliver. Yeah. Because sometimes you titillate and leave me blue balling. Mm, No. I feel like like you're good at blowjobs in that way. You got to titillate, you got to pull back, then you got to really deliver, you know? Not going to say anything. My father-in-law watches this. Okay. I get a lot of teeth. (laughs) A lot of teeth. It's mostly teeth, honestly. (laughs) Snaggle. I give head like a beaver, let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm building a dam. (laughs) I'm chopping that wood. Oh, God. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. Chomping that wood. (laughs) Continue. I'm never going to get that image out of my brain <laughs> of Lucy doing beaver BJ face into the mic. Don't slide okay. off your chair. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, <laughs> the story of Tarzan's crimes actually begins with a non-mobster regular at Porky's, Robert Matthew Van Winkle. Does <gasps> anyone know who that is? Sounds way familiar. Who is it? dun 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 Dun, 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 oh, dun. it is Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Stop. Vanilla Collaborate Ice. Collaborate and ice, listen. Baby. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Something. Got a hold of me tightly. Me something, tightly. something, something, something. Daily, daily and nightly. Daily and Will nightly. Never stop you? Stop. I don't no. know. I don't. Does anyone even know the rest of that song? No. Ice, ice, baby. My seventh yeah. grade government teacher knew all the lyrics, and I she was, said if we got like an average class score of a certain amount on a test, that she'd wrap it for us, and we and fucking did, and she, she did, fucking and she did. <laughs> she knew every single word. It was amazing. She, That's our tax dollars okay. at work, people. She, Education. She was a great teacher. I believe she it. She was good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yes, actual Vanilla Ice was a patron at Porky's. <laughs> Vanilla Ice and Tarzan developed a close friendship. Ah. <laughs> and one day, Ice brought Tarzan to Fort Apache Marina, which was a popular hangout for Miami's rich and famous, and introduced him to Juan Almeida, a salesman who had made a killing selling boats and foreign sports cars to Miami's elite. Okay. Almeida also had... Some less than legal enterprises, including acquiring black market items for wealthy Miami drug dealers. I know you're shocked. <laughs> he made a few mistakes in his life. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a few regrets. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> so Juan and Tarzan hit it off immediately and were soon discussing finding an opportunity to go into business together. They want to grow their family. Yeah. 
they eventually settled on drug smuggling. I'm sure it was a long list. And began using <laughs> Fort Apache Marina as a hub for cocaine smuggled in by high-end speedboats, I'm assuming from Cuba. This is, is this just like a coked out episode of like Miami Vice? I was but like right dark just side? going to say that. We're hit. We're ticking every box. Yeah. Initially, yes, but it goes so off the rails that I, you guys, just listen. It goes <laughs> off the rails, if you know what oh. I mean. Yeah. Off the pole. Oh. So then. It's the early 90s. The Soviet Union collapses. <laughs> and inspiration struck these two men for a much more ambitious enterprise. Uh-oh. Okay. It dawned on them that the lawlessness and chaos created by the power vacuum of the collapsed Soviet empire could provide the perfect opportunity to make some normally impossible purchases... And still fly under the radar of the government. Self-publishing. Okay. I knew it. They broke <laughs> into the ebook scene. <laughs> they each bought a Blue Yeti microphone. And together... <laughs> they started a podcast. <laughs> they couldn't so, find jobs, so they made their own. <laughs> yeah, somehow worse than a podcast, if that's even possible. Ooh. The plan they concocted was to purchase two enormous Russian helicopters. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm following. Like military-grade helicopters that were capable of transporting a huge amount of weight by hook. You know, can you picture it? Operation Dumbo Drop. Yes, I can picture it. Mm -hmm. Operation mm -hmm. Dumbo Drop? Like imagine yeah. a helicopter and then a, a cord and a hook yeah. and then like a bundle. I get it. I just like the name. That's just what I call my morning shit. Operation mm -hmm. Dumbo Drop. Well, it was a movie in the Dumbo late nineties. I love it. So they they buy these helicopters, which they would then resell for a profit to the South American cartel, and then the cartel could use them to transport cocaine. This tracks. So the first plan is to just buy two of these helicopters, but then. <laughs> They a modest two. <laughs> a pair. They're only like they're <laughs> only like five hundred dollars. So then they get there and they're like, yeah, how many you got? We'll take them. like <laughs> Oh sure. my god. And now we just have way too many helicopters that we don't know how to operate. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry, they had to pay an extra six hundred dollars to have a Russian military vet fly them back. <laughs> Honestly, worth it. That combined is still like less than my rent. So I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you yeah. watch Tiger King and you're like, oh my God, I didn't know a tiger was only $2,000. Right? Hook me up. Like I spend more than that on Le Creuset. Cash that <laughs> stimulus check, baby. Trump would right. approve. He would. Okay. To help coordinate the South American aspect of the plan, they recruited a third partner. So right now it is Tarzan, Tarzan. Juan Almeida, Fat Joe, and Vanilla Ice. Fat Joe is just... <laughs> oh. well, Fat Joe <laughs> just manages Porkies, I thought. Yeah, Fat Joe's just a manager and Vanilla Ice just... A patron. I know, there's the just so guy. many sensational names in your case. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fat Joe, know. Porkies, Vanilla Ice, Juan. <laughs> Ludwig Tarzan, two and different ones. Ludwig Tarzan von Trapp. Von Trapp. <laughs> Robert Matthew Van Winkle. Got it. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> they meet up with a third partner, a Cuban immigrant and former Cuban spy named Nelson Tony Yester, who had ties to Pablo Escobar's cartel in Colombia. Oh, God. If okay. he got famous famous enough to have his own celebration, it would be called Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yep. Okay, so acquiring the helicopters was no easy feat. The sale coordinated uh, was coordinated by a crew of lethal Russian gangsters who, like the Miami trio, had recognized the empire's collapse as an opportunity to make some serious cash. In order to increase their credibility, like the trio's credibility and influence with the Russians, they decided that Almeida should attend the meeting in St. Petersburg 
pretending to be Pablo Escobar in the flesh. <laughs> because who would know the difference? I mean, it's still the 90s. Like, people have Television. the ability to look at photos, newspapers, TV. There's even internet in some capacity for the <laughs> yeah. wealthy. But I'm yep. going to guess he gets away with it. But the risky ploy somehow works. No. Yes. <laughs> all you need is a and thick I'll... mustache, honestly. Oh, all you need? <laughs> Amanda, you and look I'll like make... Pablo Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> Your rubber face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Almeida, as Escobar, was able to coordinate the sale. So the profits from the sale of the helicopters catapulted the three men who were already fairly rich, to drug kingpin levels of wealth. Okay, so they flipped the helicopters. They didn't keep them. They flipped them. Oh, yeah. I Got thought it. they used them to, like, bring cocaine over from Cuba. They're using them to fund their operation. Gotcha. They, I thought no, they, they were using they, them as tools. They sold them to the cartel. Gotcha. Oh, okay. They so paid, kind of both. Basically no money, and then they sold them to the cartel. Genius. Got it. So that the cartel could use them to, to drug run. That's the kind of ingenuity that we as Americans are really relying on right now. It's the American Seriously. dream. Seriously. Mm -hmm. It is. So Tiller Russell, who is an, a, a director of an award-winning documentary about this case called Operation Odessa, noted, quote, if they woke up and were hungry, they would fly a private jet to Cancun for lunch. Then they'd roll on to Venezuela to check out a new casino. Okay, clearly pre-COVID activities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also I would give fly. anything to roll out of bed and go to a public place. <laughs> yeah, anything, especially lunching in Cancun on the beach, and Ugh. maybe stopping by Cuba for a Cuban sandwich on your yeah. way home. Because honestly, I would take I a senior frags at this point. I would fucking take a senior uh, frags. As soon as you said Cuban, I was oh. like, oh god, that sounds good. <laughs> I'm starving. I know, Lucy. Do you remember that Cuban place yep. that we went to in <laughs> Chicago? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, I so go. the Cuban place in Little Havana. One. How about that? Oh, that was so also really good. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as Tarzan himself described it, quote, wealthy is being able to wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to buy a new Ferrari Testarossa. It's $350,000. That's nothing. <laughs> I wonder and then what I the said. <laughs> about the Hamptons. I wonder what the poor people are doing today. <laughs> today. <laughs> Holy know, right? shit. <laughs> to be wealthy is being able to like go to just one grocery store for everything you want instead of having to go uh, yeah. to three because they have different prices. Yeah. Right. Wealthy is a full fridge. Yeah. Full pantry. <laughs> yeah. That's always yeah. how I have thought of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then, in 1996, so a few years later, the Colombian Cali cartel, which is an offshoot of Escobar's Medellin cartel, mm -hmm. remembered the success of the helicopter deal. And so they contacted the trio with a new request. Now they wanted a Russian submarine. <laughs> <laughs> like the sandwich. <laughs> like the sandwich. Like no, kind of like, like a Cuban Yep. Like the okay. naval vessel. <laughs> Full of semen. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Why stop so, at the sky when you can take the ocean floor? Take Truly. Take me to the sea. Take me to the sea. They're building a military. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Like actually, yeah. though. They got the land, yeah. they got the air. Now they want the sea. Yeah. So Tarzan described his response to this request later to an interviewer, quote, they're nice guys, the cartel members. And I didn't ask what they needed the sub for. You don't I have just to ask. You know what they <laughs> need it for. <laughs> yeah. I just called a friend who had a friend and asked if he could get us a sub. He was very serious and said he would look into it. And then my friend got back to me a couple days later and there was just one question. Do you want a sub with missiles or without? With. 
Okay, two things. One, if I call a friend to ask a friend if I need a sub, it's going to be a very different kind of sub, and I'm not talking about the sandwich. Two, when I go to Subway, I always have to make it very clear that I want my sandwich without missiles. And that mistake has been made before. Yeah. So I get this question. Also... Yeah. Was this a movie? Because it sounds really familiar in its outrageousness. It was a documentary called Operation Odessa. Maybe, it, I don't think it was a feature film. I didn't read it about a feature film. It should be. Okay, I think I've seen yeah. this documentary yeah. then. I think Disney's go. Tarzan was a an animated <laughs> feature yeah. based, of this they didn't even case. Scratch the on, surface. Yes, based on this mm-hmm. true story. With an yeah. epic soundtrack by Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah, epic. <laughs> um, also, it just reminded me of Lucy <laughs> in Greece. Oh, God. For, uh, 10 euro, you sleep on roof. <laughs> <laughs> they were oh having like a countrywide, like a tra- transportation strike. And we were supposed to go on a fucking booze cruise because we were 20, <laughs> freshly 21. Kenyon wasn't even 21. It was our but who cares? fucking it's Europe. binge drinking heyday. So we wanted to go on a booze cruise pirate ship. No luck. So we had to spend an extra night in Athens with no hostel. Everyone was like scrambling to find a place to sleep. It was fully booked. And we went, like the whole city was fully booked. We went to this one hostel and the, <laughs> the Greek guy behind the desk goes, mm, for 10 euro, you sleep on the roof. And we were like, and you did. <laughs> Can we see the roof? <laughs> so we went up to the roof. It was not we good. We did a whole photo. Sh- we did a whole photo shoot on the roof. It we was do this. just a roof. Yep. I'll put a photo on the drive of me sleeping next to this like oil spill pile puddle <laughs> <little> radiator. <laughs> it's so oh, bad. We were so broke. We were so 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 broke. Okay. Yeah. I just think so, remember splurging eleven <laughs> euros a piece to sleep in an actual bed at an expensive place. <laughs> Wow. It was like $18. <laughs> it broke my budget. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I oh called my, my mom okay. and asked her to send us money. <laughs> Please transfer money. <laughs> We're sleeping we on the roof. Help and poor. We bought, <laughs> we bought one cocktail. We were gone for like two months. We bought one cocktail at a hotel bar. It was 17 euros. And, I and you shared it. it. It was like it was for my twenty first birthday. I had like one was, birthday cocktail, and it was like thirty fucking dollars. <laughs> and Kenyon was really mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. It was beautiful. Okay, so Tarzan flies to Russia, where a retired swings Russian to ad- Russia. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> where a retired Russian admiral met him and took him to a naval base near Saint Petersburg. With little to no oversight from the government, it was not difficult for military leaders to negotiate sales of equipment or arms to the highest bidder. Okay. (laughs) The good old days. The good old days. (laughs) According to the documentary director Russell, quote, as far as the retired admiral was concerned, he owned that military base. He might have sold them the submarine, taken the money, and walked away with the money. So, like, like no checks and balances, no goes. regulation. Yeah, it's just a free for all. Yeah. It's the wild, wild eat, far east. E- far east. <laughs> <laughs> so, the original price that the Admiral quoted to Tarzan was $10 million for the submarine without missile. Okay. We need those missiles, That's baby. reasonable. So Tarzan negotiated it down to only five point five million. Dang, Nicely Tarzan! Nicely done. Yeah, you also, really plus, beat your oh, chest this, for that one, didn't you, buddy? This is the six hundred dollars thing. I got my facts wrong. Plus an additional six hundred dollars for a crew to pilot the submarine <laughs> to Columbia. <laughs> Can you imagine it. being in that crew, just knowing full fucking yeah. well what's going on? Just like, well, yeah. yeah. How do we get home? You're on your own. Yeah. I don't know. Also, why yeah. was the submarine so much more fucking expensive than these like heavy duty helicopters? 
It's probably a lot it's harder a to submarine. operate and a lot bigger and a lot more complicated. And there's yeah. But this is like a reasonable price for a military submarine, I feel. Sure. But the helicopter price was not a reasonable price. They also may price. have been like more desperate to get rid of the helicopters than they are to part yeah, with a submarine. like a surplus. This, this, mm-hmm. this is also six years later. So I feel uh, like things have kind of like settled a little bit so they can mm-hmm. charge more. But this the helicopters was like the fucking wall fell. Yeah. Something about Yeltsin. I literally Shed at that time fan. could have bought two helicopters and had it be less than my rent. Yeah. This feels like Animal Crossing. Build a house, buy two helicopters. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. no repercussions Some- for either one. Have debt, even Some- in a video game. Something about turnips. Okay. Nailing it. So, (laughs) Tony Yester, the Cuban, Mm -hmm. reached out to the cartel and quoted them the price of $35 million to buy the sub. Okay. So, they paid $5.5. The Mm -hmm. cartel was going to pay $35 million. Mm -hmm. That's a risky move, my friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cartel finds out. You're in trouble. You're <laughs> ripping them off for a <laughs> shitload of money. Yeah. Mr. Yester, man. So Yester defended the high price tag, reminding them that the sub was capable of transporting 40 tons of cocaine and would essentially pay for itself, which it definitely would. Mm-hmm. And You're not Yester, wrong. Yester and Almeida met Tarzan in Russia, and the three posed for pictures along with the Russian admiral aboard a 300-foot-long submarine, and then they sent those pictures to the cartel as proof that it existed. And posted them and, on f- Instagram. And, and there use are them as photos their- on <gasps> the drive. Yes! yes. Please favorite. tell me these ended up being Tinder pics because oh, I'm here I'd for swipe, it. I'd swipe, baby. Okay, first of mm-hmm. all, these helicopters are gorge. <laughs> I'm scrolling down. Oh my word! Oh, I kind of yeah. Do you like see now it. why a submarine is worth so much more than a helicopter? Look at it. It's just big. I love <laughs> the Russian like face. general's hat. Yeah, I know. And his like double brass button jacket. Yeah, it's really something. This is really yeah. Honest, that's a submarine. That man's outfit is more proof of the legitimacy of this plan than the actual submarine yep. behind them. If I'm yep. being honest, absolutely. I would assume that thing was like a cardboard standy of a submarine <laughs> for like a middle school play. Yeah. If I didn't see this behatted Russian the admiral mm-hmm. with the brass buttons, the brass yep. buttons really get me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the cartel was into it and they wired a deposit of $10 million. They were like, great, let's do this. Let's get it over here. <laughs> oh, <Great. honey. laughs> But then things fell apart. You don't say. Hmm. They never do, <laughs> the FBI, usually. <laughs> the FBI, who had been surveilling Porky's strip club <laughs> for years. Mm-hmm. They had bought also the booths. Been- they bugged the booths. They also tapped Tarzan's cell phone, and they had collected enough information at this point to arrest the three men. Dude, get a burner. Right? It's what the, are you doing? You're buying helicopters and submarines with your regular phone? I don't know that they had burners in the 90s. You have a burner beeper? Yeah, I'm sure they know. had burner. Have you ever watched The Wire? Literally, yeah, no. It's next phones. on my list. I finished. They use the, their beepers. I finished The Sopranos <laughs> yesterday, you guys. Don't, Don't get into it me. because I'm I not, haven't I'm seen not going to tell you. I'm just saying that was a lot of hours that I finished in a, about eight days. Congratulations. I'm You're doing that with like Game of Thrones wire. right now. I need The help. Wire is definitely your next the move after The Sopranos. The Wire is incredible. You'll okay. love it. Okay. Okay. Tarzan, who by now had flown back to Miami, was arrested in January 1997 and served a served with a 30 count federal indictment. Ooh. Almeida had actually stayed on in Russia after the submarine sale to see if he could negotiate some more deals. Yeah, and then He's he found on a hot out streak. about Tar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then he found out about Tarzan's arrest, and so he just was like. Never mind. Oop, gotta go. (laughs) 
Oops, packs a tiny suitcase. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bring my quip. That's my cue. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Yester took the cartel's entire $10 million deposit and fled to Amsterdam. No. <laughs> yes, queen. <laughs> 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 he was a bit of an expert at fleeing when things got hot and had over 40 different fake passports. <laughs> yes. That's so many. That's so I many. I didn't even keep all of those identities straight. <laughs> I, would be, I would be so confused with who I was. I know, right? Wow, that so is We so can barely excessive. remember to say our own names at the top of every episode oh, that we've been doing never. for three years. I never this is remember. episode 169, <laughs> not including the other episodes we do as additional content. <laughs> and we can't remember those names. Yeah. 40 false passports. Yeah. 40. I, al- yeah. I also have like six different names. Yeah, you do. I, I can never the remember your name. I get confused about my own identity, not even trying to pull something at the airport. Every time I have to book a flight for us, I'm like, okay, <laughs> what name do you use, Lucy, for this <laughs> fucking What's on your ship? driver's license? What is on your fucking driver's license? <gasps> what's, what's on Lucy's driver's license is none of the names that you <laughs> no, we call listeners her. know. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> not a one. Maybe one. It's Maybe. my nom nope. de plume. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> so going on the lam when you're wanted by both the FBI and fucking Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. It's not great. Came with some risks. <laughs> um, and now the cartel was out $10 million and had no submarine. Mm. They were pissed. I like to imagine that Yester is on the submarine alone with the $10 million <laughs> trying to flee to Amsterdam, <laughs> like driving it by Paddling. himself. <laughs> Just putt, 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 putt. I don't putt know, I'll water. figure it out. <laughs> he runs out of gas. He tries to hitch a ride. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so they began hunting for Yester and interrogating his associates and family members and threatening violence if they did not cooperate. They, so, meaning the FBI or the, or the cartel? The family. Honestly, the family. probably both. <laughs> probably but. both. Yeah. So Yester, in a very strange move, rather than hiding from the cartel any longer, decided to reach out to them and arranged to meet a group of members in Madrid <laughs> offering to complete the submarine sale in exchange for the remaining $25 million. That is ballsy. Also, it's real ballsy. Th- they have almost nothing to lose by just murdering this man. And I mean, but yep. also like Yester now has $10 million and a submarine that he doesn't fucking know what to do with and is on the run. And the people that he's probably more afraid of are the cartel than the FBI. So why not try to like make good with the cartel? But demanding yeah. the full price that they had charged, can, even after can, all of this, is real You don't real make good with the cartel. You don't. Mm-hmm. You make bad and you, then they cut your head off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think mm-hmm. redemption is much of a thing. No. Mm-mm. So... Completing the sale would also have been impossible at this point because I don't think he had possession of the submarine anymore because uh, he like got the fuck out of Dodge. He wasn't driving it himself very slowly to, to Amsterdam. Yeah. How would he just have it on his person? No. In a, tucked in his pockets. In Amsterdam. Just like, he, I don't he mind bought, that sub. He bought the largest backpack space in Animal Crossing mm-hmm. to fit that fucking space? submarine. It's just pocket space. That's what I mean, but yes, honey. Dear God, I'm pouring myself another drink while you talk about Animal Crossing. <laughs> that was okay. it. <laughs> so this guy fucking greed. That wasn't it. That greed is wild. So this guy literally thought that he could scam the fucking drug cartel out of tens of millions of dollars. It's I love it. Fucking insane. It's bonkers. dream big. Fucking dream Meg. big. Yes, sir. You're a master. Also, to quote. A douchebag that I went to college with and made out with once. He was like, the best piece of advice that I ever got from my grandfather is after the first 10 million, it's all ego. 
Was that the guy with the neck tattoo and that's what was tattooed on his body because it was equally as douchey, whatever it was? No, that was the guy with the neck tattoo and his neck tattoo said knowledge of self, but I was so embarrassed about it that I told people it said keeping it real. Because <laughs> that's better. <laughs> I mean, a quippy fa- neck tattoo is definitely better than a serious neck tattoo. Well, it wasn't even a neck tattoo. It was like a like a necklace, like collarbone It was thing. Huge. I don't know how and you ended you up see- with Zach because you're your romantic choices were so questionable so many map. times. You have and an all, all over. Hence track record. It is all, all over, over the, the map. map. <laughs> I'm dizzy. But knowledge of self guy, you could, when he wore like a V-neck, you could only see the giant K. So I knew I had to come up with something that started with K. <laughs> it just says Kenyon. Anyway, it's my name. He's really <laughs> into me. We've known each other for 36 hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. After the first 10 million, it's all ego. After the first 10 million, it's all ego, baby. So there you go. Financial advice from the wine and crime gals. Ick. Jesus so, Christ. Okay. Um, I'll never know that I've life. Been, I will never no. know that life. No. No. Uh, ten million after the first yen. 10 million deviled eggs, it's all ego is maybe <laughs> something that I could... That I can... That I get. After the first ten dollars <laughs> spent on one takeout meal, yes, it's all ego. Yeah, I really yeah. want ten million deviled eggs now. I fucking love. So, upon eggs. arriving at the meeting place, Yester called his contact and lied about being in a particular taxi cab. So he was actually in a taxi cab further back in the road, and then he watched ten cartel gangsters descend on the cab that he said he was in kill an innocent bystander smart (laughs) no literally yes (gasps) no Um, i don't know if anyone died but someone got they went after oh there were probably broken teeth and chunks of flesh everywhere though Oh, call fat, fat Tony. Tony was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't work. I don't work here. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then Yester f- figured out that he was being set up and fled. So back in the States, Tarzan turned informer on Almeida in exchange for a jail sentence of what do you think a jail, a fair jail sentence would be for attempting to sell a military grade submarine to a Colombian drug cartel? Well, you're basically like a murderer by proxy at that point. You haven't but taken it was a attempted. life. And it's just capitalism. Yeah, that's the thing. We have to remember weeks. this is capitalism in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, obviously it's going to be absurdly low, but you would like to think there's like a 25 to life on something like that, but mm-hmm. there's not. Yep. 30 months. That's <laughs> <laughs> like oh, uh, two and a half years. Okay. Yep. yep. Worth it. That's how annoying moms refer to their toddler child. 30 months. This is my 30 <laughs> month old son. I'm going to see how many I months did. old I am. <laughs> so after serving his time, he was deported to Israel, uh, hmm. where the rest of his family had immigrated after leaving Odessa. So I'm a, I'm, believe that they were Jewish. I am 395 <laughs> months old. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to insist that my mother refers to me as such. Yep. <laughs> Clutch the baby book. <laughs> oh, her teeth are growing. In. <laughs> she's still her teething. Teeth necklace. My husband tells me she's still teething. <laughs> Ish. Uh, her geriatric teeth are coming in. <laughs> By my husband, I meant her husband. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he did not remain in Israel. When the director of the documentary decided to uh, make the documentary in 2011, he tracked Tarzan down to a prison in Panama where oh, he was serving no. time on charges that remain unclear. What? That's bad. <laughs> You do not want to end up in a prison in Panama on unclear no. charges. No. Oh. So remaining true to himself, Tarzan had opened a new strip club in Panama. <laughs> it's all he knows. <laughs> Por case. 
<laughs> Poor case. <laughs> Wise. That would actually be a fucking amazing name for a street. Humble. Wise. Isn't that isn't that pork? Humble. Yeah, Hamon. Hamons. <laughs> yeah, but Hamons. I like porques. I like porques too. <laughs> Which porque doesn't have like the word Y doesn't have an S, but it could be the apostrophe like porkies. I like porques. <laughs> Wise. <laughs> so <laughs> Porky is <laughs> likely arrested. <laughs> He was likely arrested for some combination of cocaine and pimping. There's <laughs> something in there. <laughs> Don't worry. He broke out of that Panamanian prison <laughs> and made it back to Russia where he now lives. Via submarine. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Is this not the weirdest case I've ever done? <laughs> yeah. It's up there. It's definitely weird. <laughs> it's super weird. I really El- wanted more from the submarine, but mm. I'll take it. <laughs> Almeida was eventually arrested, but he hired an extremely effective lawyer. And Clearly. Also Tarzan <laughs> Rick- <laughs> Anyway, he successfully appealed his original sentence and served only 18 <laughs> months in prison. <sighs> for selling a nuclear... Missile submarine to Mm -hmm. a cartel. I just don't get it. And meanwhile, like black folks still get like 10 year sentences for like fucking petty marijuana offenses at many places in the United States. It's just, well, this, the U S wasn't sentencing him, right? Yeah. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get confused with the Panama and the whatever. So after serving his sentence, Almeida went back to his old ways. And in 2017, he was charged by the DEA with possession of narcotics with intent to distribute. And for that, he was sentenced to six years in federal prison. Oh, oh good. Much more fair. Much Mm -hmm. fairer. Much more fairness. Fairer. Most smartest. Most fairerest. <laughs> After the failed attempt to scam the, the Colombian Cali drug cartel, Yester was able to successfully remain on the lam for years until 2017 when he was arrested in Rome on his way to a friend's wedding. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> on unrelated charges. He got pulled when over asked, for like a broken tail light. It's all a car like, related. It, it is. is. It really is. Keep your fucking car tuned up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can avoid a lot of shit mm-hmm. with the cops. Mm-hmm. Uh, when asked by an interviewer about the 10 million he had absconded with, he replied, quote, I cannot fucking believe how fast I spent it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Man, so many devil eggs. I feel that if, truly. I feel that if I were gifted Honestly, ten million dollars, it oh, get forty eight hours max a week, <laughs> max forty eight hours. Yeah, I'd buy an island. It would be gone in like a second. I'd buy a submarine. That money would be gone. <laughs> I'd buy a submarine. Yeah. In an interview with the du- the documentary director Tiller Russell, uh. Juan Almeida responds cryptically to a question about the current relationship amongst the three men, saying, quote, We're still friends. We're still doing business together. We're still we're criminals. Buying, we're not buying submarines, but we're still doing business. You've and that literally never is done anything legal. My case. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> There's so much more, you guys. You have to watch the documentary. And read the articles. They're so, it's so good. Did you watch the documentary, Kenyon? No. I <laughs> am pretty sure it's on Netflix. I am positive I've seen it. And I'm positive it's as fucking insane as you prevented it. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't you have can time see for that. the wheels no. turning. I'm like, okay, should I lie and say that I definitely watched it so that I like seem a little bit more credible? Or you know what? No, you know what? She gave herself away when I said, "Was this a movie?" And she goes, "I don't think so." <laughs> I said it was a documentary. Nailed it. 
Whatever. Well Ain't nobody done. got time for that. So good. Brava. Insane. And I love it. Good on ya. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Let's, let's take, take a quick, a quick break. break. We'll hear from yeah. our sponsors. <laughs> Brought to you by Russian submarines are us, (laughs) (laughs) and cocaine. Oh God! Five hundred dollar helicopters dot com. It should dot forward slash Russia. It should be apparent that this episode was not brought to you guys by cocaine because no. Anyway, it's quarantine. I can't get access to that. Here we go. (laughs) Remember, sex ed. All too well. <laughs> yeah, it was maybe my favorite class. The only class I got an A in in middle school. You were paying um, attention. <laughs> I was really paying attention. But something I remember is that we really learned to prevent pregnancy at all costs. It just reminds me of that scene in Mean Girls. If you get pregnant, you will die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all the tools to prevent pregnancy, but when it comes to planning ahead for it, it can be an utter mystery. So it's time for fertility education, okay? And that's why Modern Fertility was created. It's the easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. You mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. And did you know that traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000? Yeah, no, no. We all need to be saving our pennies right now. But yeah, Modern I Fertility... To buy. Right? <laughs> Hard yeah. same. Can't mm. leave my house. I need a couch. Yep. But Modern Fertility only costs $159 to get the same information. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash gals, G-A-L-S, you can get $20 off your test. Yeah. And to sweeten the deal just a little bit more, if you have an HSA or FSA, you can use those dollars on Modern Fertility. That is the best. Yeah. Which in my book just alleviates any question that I mm-hmm. would have ever had about this. Mm -hmm. So with Modern Fertility's test results, you'll get insight into how many eggs you have, hormone levels, and any reproductive red flags. Very important. The results go in-depth into what every hormone means, and you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. If you want kids today, or maybe one day, you do need information to make the decision that's best for you. Mm-hmm. I kind of picture modern fertility as that support system when you go from like, if your friend set, tells you that she's pregnant, you're like, oh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Right? I, uh, we're we're like, celebrating? For, okay, we're celebrating. For Woo! so long, it was like a not a great thing. Mm-hmm. And then you turn that corner and then you're like, oh, wait, I, this is actually a really great thing. Yeah. But there's not a lot of support for turning that corner and like knowing about your own body. Right, right. Yeah. So that's why I, I am it. a big fan. So right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com forward slash gals. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or like we said, thousands it could cost mm-hmm. at a doctor's office. Mm-hmm. So get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash gals. One more time, modernfertility.com forward slash gals. Treat your knowledge. Treat it. Okay, everybody. In these unprecedented times, (laughs) (laughs) it is more important than ever to support makers and artisans, especially if they're local. And that is why today I am talking about my wonderful friend and colleague, Anna Chambers Goldberg, who is a new mother, literally popped out a baby like minutes before COVID lockdown. Bless her. And is an extraordinarily talented maker in Minneapolis. She makes some of the most exquisitely stitched clothing items I have ever had the pleasure of placing upon my body. And she's also making pillows right now. Uh, Yeah, I'm looking at her website right now and just Uh drooling over the pillows. Uh Uh-huh. So just a little something about her. All of her pieces in her collection are made by hand in Minneapolis. Materials are chosen for their superb texture and quality and are sometimes upcycled or vintage. I have a handful of shirts that she custom made for me that are literally made of scraps of fabric from other projects so that she's not just discarding those items and they are 
some of my favorite pieces. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen me tag her in these posts. I love wearing them. They are so beautiful and so flawless and fun. Um, and her method results in high quality but very limited editions, including one-of-a-kind pieces. And she believes this adds originality and integrity to the designs. And I could not agree more. So she comes from a background in printmaking and painting. And you could really see that come through in the items that she features on her store. If you go to her shop, which is acgmpls.com, you can see items as they come and go from her website. You can also follow her on ACG. MPLS on Instagram and I am eyeing this hand painted peasant top that is on her site so I might be buying that before yeah. anybody else gets a chance to even buy it and she makes so many cool things but also offers gift cards so if you are loving some pieces that are on her site but maybe they're sold out maybe you want to order something custom maybe you want to just wait and see what pops up that's like hitting you right in the right spot buy a gift card and then you're just prepared for when that item hits the store and you can go ahead and so wipe it so check out ACG mpls.com one more time that's acg mpls.com and seriously claude your bod with her incredible and incredible items yeah. treat yourself treat it so i have conflicting feelings about this case obviously it's pretty fucked up what happened to the men in this case no one died uh, but these women specifically sought out like insufferable rich douchebags <gasps> and the not so small part of me that thinks men are trash is super here for this story. And if you have seen the movie Hustlers, then you know where this is going. Yes. Have you seen the movie Hustlers? No. I have. It's really good. I know. I want to watch it, but I have not watched it yet. I want to, I want to watch it too, but my only opportunity to watch it was on an airplane, and I felt a little weird because I didn't want to slide off my fucking airplane seat. Yeah. So. Is it not a lot. on HBO for which you both have my password? I have yeah. uh, Williams. I, I don't use up. your HBO. Oh, Thank okay. you very I, much. I do. I got my own man. I can steal my HBO now. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to travel back to simpler times, way, way back to when touching your face would not get a bunch of people to yell at you, but it's okay. I just washed my hands and there's a hair in my nose. We're in uh, our own back, homes. <laughs> back to 2014. The mm. setting, a New York strip club called Scores... <laughs> which is a featured club in this scandal, but several others did the same. Now, I say back to 2014 because that's when the scam was uncovered, but this hustle actually began in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, making this story feel mm. even more topical right now. And there is seriously mm -hmm. a hair growing out of my nostril that keeps tickling <laughs> me every time I take a breath. <laughs> the fuck? Okay. Hmm. Bringing you the content, people. Is this the story of Hustlers? Yes. yes, this is the true story behind the yeah. movie Hustlers. You have to see the, the movie so good. I'm so excited for this. Yep. So veteran dancers Rosalind Rosie Keo and Karina Pasucci were working at scores. Well, they'd actually met like at clubs and other jobs they'd had leading up to this, but at the, eventually worked circuit. together at scores. Yeah. Yep. Whereas in many cases with these clubs and what Lucy covered briefly in her segment, dancers' contracts were similar to those of like salon employees or even tattoo artists. Like a lot of these folks are essentially not hired by the company, but you're mm -hmm. renting the stage and you pay yeah. the club for the time and space to dance on and on average, these women only took home about 20% of the cash that they raked in with the club Ooh, taking the rest. What? I didn't realize yeah. it was that high. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. one, well, for, like, this, um, for a lot of these. Indentured servitude? Basically. Well, it's, it's the same thing with sex workers in, like, officially zoned red light districts, like in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. They have to rent out yeah. that window space. It's incredibly yep. expensive. And... They also have to declare their earnings, mm -hmm. unlike, you know, illegal pro sex work. Mm -hmm. And so they, yeah, they're really not making much money. It's not great. God. One article pointed out that it cost $300 for dancers to work at the club. Then the club took 40% of the night's earnings, and the dancers also tipped out the bar, the wait staff, and the security staff. Shit. So the well was pretty dry by the time they counted their take-home. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Quote, you're like, no, I'm doing all the work. I show up to work every day, miserable, drinking to be here, putting up with nonsense. What do you do? You came here in a suit, Rosie said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. 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 I worked at, I've worked at restaurants that are, were similar to that. A long time ago, back before I had like any idea about the industry and found better places to work. But like, this does happen in a lot of tipped employee and it really sucks mm-hmm. yeah for sure um so scores had gotten used to catering to extremely wealthy wall street clients one in particular stood out to me when i was doing my research rosie said in an article for the cu- for the cut quote we had a guy who was is at guggenheim partners he spent 300 grand in one week he came in three times 100 grand every time he walked in the room Everyone made $10,000 every time he came in. Wow. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, wealth, as Kenyon's case was talking about it, this is, this kind of wealth exists in the U.S. This was happening in New York. That's into egoism territory for sure. Oh, yeah. Can you fucking pay my student loans? I know. And this guy's dropping 300 grand in one week at a club. So imagine. pics, honey. You really do. Or just start dancing. You know what I mean? I, get get I don't to dance. I have great feet, and I only mom dance now. It's, you there's have gotta good be, feet. You know I what? Like your there's feet. a kink for that, honey. There's a kink for that always. But also, you have good feet. You just can't stand people touching them, and that's Fair. where the real money is. I'm sorry to mm. tell you. I've done yeah, my research. <laughs> So uh, a woman named Samantha Barbash, who we will get to, also commented, quote, that's nothing to them. Nothing. Mm. So when the market crashed a year later, you can imagine that these women were as negatively affected as any whose income was destroyed by the financial crisis. They had to get creative to maintain their lifestyle. And fortunately, Rosie was a lifelong business woman. Which I wrote phonetically in my notes, and I'm very proud of it. (laughs) Do you know whether Rosie is the J-Lo character in the movie Hustlers? Nope. J-Lo, I think, is the Samantha character. I'm 90%. She's the one that teaches all of them how to do it. I think that's Samantha. Okay. And we'll get to it. Well, we won't get to which character is which, but I'm 99% sure that's Samantha. I just Anyway, but you've seen the movie, for God's sakes. (laughs) Uh, Okay. According to an article from ABC News, quote, she started her entrepreneurship in grade school where she would sell candy for a profit. Yes. Keo Keo started working as a waitress at a diner in Nanuet, New York at 17 years old. Quote, that's when I started hustling because, you know, you work off tips. She said, you know, the harder you work and the nicer you are, the more money you're going to get. Or you put pictures Mm -hmm. of your nieces in your server book and pretend that they're your kids. Um, Quick (laughs) anecdote about hustling in grade school Mm. when Scott and I were in Explorers Club during the summer, like our latchkey program, we set up a small business and I distinctly remember him asking if we needed to declare our income to the IRS. We were in fourth grade. Oh my God, Scott. And our business. (sighs) You're such an old man. (laughs) Declare your bow ties to the IRS, Scott. And our business. We put just a blanket over a table and we had a tattoo parlor under the table, which was basically we went around and collected all the best markers that still had like, you know, a lot of ink in them. Yeah. Really, I think we bartered for markers. It was a it was a cartel situation and we were offering tattoos for fifteen dollars. And what? And one of the takers. One of the teachers. Well, teachers, you know, the counselors essentially yeah was trying to humor us and he came in he's like oh what you got going on we're like we're selling tattoos they're 15 dollars a piece what do you think and he's like oh you know i don't have any money on me but you know if you you know if you want to give me one for free i could show it off to everyone else and we're like no do you know how much a real tattoo (laughs) costs like <laughs> he was pulling that shit. That's like, if you make this art for me for free, I will shout yeah. you out on Instagram. It's and that's worth you even exposure. more than money. No. So we were Pay sh- artists. turning down that exposure bullshit in fourth mm-hmm. grade. But also nice. we couldn't read the room because we were just no. old and cranky. Also, and you fourth graders read. don't have 15 
dollars. Anyway, that's no, where the start of my entrepreneurial spirit came from. <laughs> In fourth grade, it was very cool to have braces because fourth mm-hmm. graders don't have braces, but middle schoolers, mm-hmm. so the older siblings of the fourth graders have braces. Mm-hmm. And they're different braces colors. Were like, and they're all different colors because they have the different like rubber band rubber bands. things. Mm-hmm. You can pick your colors. And is there a point to this? And <laughs> so in fourth grade, I, my mom bought me a big box of different colored, like striped paper clips, mm-hmm. <laughs> like no, really vibrantly colored paper clips. And so I would take, like unpack them and like mold them into like a <laughs> mouth shape so that you would wear a paper clip like a grill basically over your teeth if and you then weren't I would making like them. fake paper clip retainers in middle school what were you even doing or elementary school I sold them and I got shut down by the by the teacher uh, by what? the IRS because it was how much money did it was you so make tax popular. evasion how much a you- lot but what's a lot though to a fourth grader yeah. I don't know. My expenses were zero. <laughs> <laughs> it was all profit. It was all, profit. It was all net. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It w- it went like gangbusters. <laughs> it, people from other grades were buying them. I remember it was like kind of, I had, I hired like different people to like she be my would. like minions. <laughs> Oh to my like, God. Be, like, like basically pushers to like sell it. You were pimping out your friends to sell your grills. All right. Well, this is amazing, but this episode's now at over two hours, so I'm going to keep going. Give the people okay. what they In want. In the wake of all of this lost <laughs> income, Rosie saw many of her dancer colleagues resorting to sex work within the clubs to make up lost wages. Quote, you weren't getting paid to sit and talk anymore and hang out, she said. Girls were doing, these are her words, not mine. Quote, girls were doing dirty things, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. This is when Rosie teamed up with Samantha Barbash, who I'm pretty sure is J-Lo's character, who was not a dancer, but more like a promoter who would drum up business for clubs around the city. One Mm -hmm. of the common methods used was fishing, where a beautiful promoter or dancer that works for the club would go out to bars in NYC, meeting drunk men, flirting, and suggesting that they all go to the strip club. Totally on the up and up. Everyone does this. So Rosie and Karina, at Samantha's suggestion, started hitting up happy hours all over the city to pick up men. From ABC News, again, quote, I was dressed in a blazer. I was pretending that I also came out of work and had a rough day, Rosie said. People were like, what kind of work are you in? And I'm like, I'm in marketing. (laughs) Fine. That's what Kenyon says when people ask her what she does. I'm in ad sales. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm gonna I sales. am not going to tell one more fucking stranger what a podcast is. No. I can't. No, thank I you. don't have the patience. It's I'm like a radio show. Anyway. <laughs> and these women knew exactly what to look for. So Rosie explained, quote, if you saw a black American Express, you knew you had a high roller. You're like, oh, we have a shark. We're looking for, okay, I don't, these are clearly designer brands and I have no idea what they are. Hublots, Hublot, Hublots, Hublo, nailed it. Rolex is that what I got? And Patek Philippe's, nailed it. That was I like Hublots the best. Hublots. I'm not. I'm not calling it Hublo. I'm calling it <laughs> Hermes. <Hublots>. Er, her. <laughs> Hermes. <laughs> so clearly I'm so wealthy that I can't recognize any of the fucking things on this list except for Rolexes. <laughs> Fancy watches. Yep. <laughs> so once their marks were convinced to go to a strip club, the women would take them to one, such as scores. Uh, while there, the clients would pay for the cover charge, food and drinks, and perhaps a lap dance where uh, and a trip to a private champagne room. The women would then get a percentage of the club's earnings because now they're not just dancing in the club, they're actually they're like promoting the Driving club and bringing business in business. There. Yep. Mm-hmm. So again, strictly speaking, this is all legal, but really wasn't filling the profit gap in the way that the women had hoped. So Rosie and her crew were discovering that after spending thousands of dollars in one evening, many of the male clients expected more than just conversations and lap dances. So she and Barbash, not wanting to carry out any sex acts uh, for for pay themselves, decided to hire sex workers to perform sex acts on their male clients. Rosie said, quote, so Samantha and I were like, okay, we need to find girls. I became a madam. I saw the Mm -hmm. connection. I saw the opportunity. And little by little, you find yourself doing things that sound crazy. It's money, honey. It is, yeah. 
And her colleague Karina said, quote, we did call girls from Backpage and Craigslist. Um, I guess it's a form of outsourcing. <laughs> they were oh, hiring damn. freelancers. Yeah. Wow. But even more money came from a new strategy in the scam that soon made for, for the hiring of sex workers unnecessary. So once the already drunk men were lured into the club, they would spike their drinks with molly and or ketamine and then charge thousands of dollars to those high-limit credit cards that their marks had in their wallets. They were charged several thousand-dollar bar tabs that they never even opened, ATM withdrawals, which, as we've discussed, those fees are high, and a large portion of the fees are typically set by the club. Yeah. So it's not just a fee going to the bank. It's a fee that goes to the club, mostly. For the real estate and for the ATM. <laughs> exactly. And then either forge their marks signatures or have have them sign off themselves, but they were so high that they couldn't even like read the numbers on the tab properly. Yeah. So they were just like, whatever, Ketamine I'll just sign it. You up. Yep. So ABC News reported that, quote, after testing the drugs, law enforcement realized the cocktail had the effect of making men nearly unconscious while outwardly appearing to be awake. In this condition, Rosie and her crew would take the men to strip clubs where they would walk past the omnipresent security cameras into back rooms where their credit cards could be run repeatedly. So they're on like camera. Like, he walked here of his own accord. This yep. is all him, blah, blah, blah. But oh, also, yeah. like, Man. in this context of women essentially date rape drugging slash date date thieving because they were not performing any sex acts on these people i don't think they would have been able to perform anyway right exactly it's not great no it's not great it's super not great but in this particular context and because of all of our internalized sexist like notions about just specific situations Oh, I'm not I surprised love the idea. that they got away for way with this for a while. They did get away with it yeah. for a while, and we will get to that. But it's also like the, the like I said at the top, the thing that's redeeming about it to me is that they went after like the worst of the worst yeah. of their of these people, and like that doesn't make it okay. But it is a little bit satisfying to see some rich asshole have his card card maxed out at a strip mm-hmm. club and then just plopped in a cab and sent home. I also like, think yeah, they, they drugged him and they robbed him, but they didn't physically harm him. Well, it's unless he had an adverse right. reaction to the drugs. But I sure. think that back to the egoism thing, like the next morning when that guy realizes how much fucking money he spent at the drug... At the drug, at the club, and realizes, or maybe doesn't realize that he was drugged by these women. Because again, that isn't the first thing that would leap to someone's mind. Mm -mm. He's embarrassed that he got that fucked up. He's embarrassed that he spent that much money, but he's also fucking rich. So he can just like shake it off. We're going to get to it. Don't you worry, Henny. After the first 10 million, it's all all ego. ego. So in one of my favorite bits of reporting on this case, the New York Daily News, which never fails to bring in the (laughs) gems, said... Poorly mannered patrons got the worst of it. Quote, because of the amount of stress we had to endure, we were just like, you know what? These people are fucking pissing me off. Just for that, I'm going to max out his credit card like a penalty. (laughs) You're going to be left with a zero balance, zero credit line just for being annoying. We needed to make it worth it, Keo told New York York Daily News. I can't believe that the credit card... I feel like I can't buy groceries without my credit card being like... Is this fraud? Yeah, We've but you have to out. also remember that black cards don't have a limit yeah. at all. And yeah. so, like, they're targeting people who have cards that either have a limit so extraordinarily high or no limit at all. So spending like this is actually not going to raise Nothing. red flags on the kinds of folks that they're actually targeting. You're right. Which in, is in so addition to absurdly like, out of our own realm of thinking. In addition right. to, like, the location where you're spending money. Like, if I go to another state and spend $500, my bank's like, wait a second. But, yeah. like, these people are all over the place all the time. Like, they're just fucking rich. When I got my first, like, real person credit card with a $5,000 limit, I called both of you to celebrate. And that <laughs> yeah. was, like, yeah. four months ago. I remember yeah. that. Because yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. And I still I will, like, barely put anything on it because I care Because you're, about like, my nervous. Score. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, with the men so impaired, not only did they not need to perform for s- perform sex on them because 
they didn't they didn't remember um they barely even needed to dance they just would like bring them into the the champagne room and just like sit there it's because there are no cameras in the champagne room typically, but then they're at least getting them on security footage going in and out. And if they were having trouble getting up and walking on their own, sometimes they would even give them cocaine to get them like coherent enough to just make the walk in and out and yeah. be on the camera as being coherent. So, like that shit is super fucked up. Is. That's some okay. really fucked ketamine, up shit. Ketamine is, is a horse tranquilizer. It just yeah. makes you, it just, paralyzes you mm-hmm. basically uh, i've never i've never done it i have but accidentally it, done it i i yeah. smoked a bowl out front of a club <gasps> because someone yeah. offered me weed and it was laced with ketamine and i had the wherewithal for maybe five minutes to go inside grab my friend and give her my keys and say call 911 and then i just started puking and like woke up in the hospital with like no yeah. recollection of what had happened it just it fucking paralyzes it you. Was like you're the still the worst awake. experience of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done it. I never want to do I don't, it. I but. don't I truly don't understand how people can do it recreationally. I clearly just don't or have the tolerance why? for it. But yeah, I mean, it was not a feeling that mm. I enjoyed at all. No. Yeah. But also like the way that these women were kind of managing the situation. Mm-hmm. It, even if they weren't it's dancing for them, if they were just in the room, just like having fun. And then the, again, the guy wakes up the next morning, he might have like really brown out memories of like, totally. oh, I was at a strip club. Oh, there were women yep. all over me. Like, oh, that's where all of my money went. So they had exactly. to at yep. least participate to a degree. The bare minimum. Yeah. 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 How do you explain to your girlfriend, your wife, your banker? Oh, I was at a strip club and I got taken advantage of. They just right. wouldn't say that. Well, and that's exactly what we're about to get to. So the only muscle that the women really had to flex was whichever one controls swiping a card through a reader. And my next part here, you're probably wondering, as I was, wouldn't these dudes notice when the credit card bills came and freak out and fight the charges? But the answer is not really. 99% of the time, the charges would go completely undisputed at all because to do so would cause major issues with these men's wives and partners Mm -hmm. and they were so out of it that they didn't even know for sure if they had consented to the charges. And the ego thing, the embarrassment and the ego. ego. Yep. So those Mm -hmm. who did come around asking were gaslit by Samantha and the staff and they'd say, quote, you were so happy, don't you remember? You were tipping everyone and they could barely Mm -hmm. remember. So they're like, and then their security could just be like, we have you on camera here spending this money, handing me your credit card. Like what credit card company is going to be like, oh, sure, here, here's a reimbursement of a hundred grand. Like no one's going to do that. And no one's going to go like get a toxicology report like the next day. Nope. Like I don't Mm -hmm. think dudes in particular are just like oh my god i've been i was drugged last night mm-hmm. i have oh, to so go to the hospital prove, you can't prove that you weren't the one doing taking it, it recreationally like yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. i mean it's Damn. the same reasons why like these same exact questions get po- posed against women who are yeah drugged and sexually assaulted it's a terrible so it's like, thing and i'm it's fucked up i'm it's sad that and i you know, that we like celebrate it, not really celebrate it, but like there's a whole movie made out of it and it's like a funny like thing. But I think if, it's it, if nothing dark. else, it just sheds light on, yeah, are the genders reversed? Mm-hmm. How fucked up is it the other way? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's fucked up all around. Yeah. And this was, this scam went on for literal years. They went on scamming the richest, most obnoxious assholes they could find and they fucking lived it up. Rosie was driving a souped up Cadillac Escalade. God bless her. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Their it was closets, appropriate for the times. <laughs> exactly. Their closets were, quote, lined with Gucci and Chanel and spending over $1,000 $1, on shoes was the norm. I think you mean Gucky and Channel. Channel and Gucky. (laughs) (laughs) And they felt empowered doing it. Rosie said in an interview that no man put them up to anything. This was all their vision, their execution. She said, quote, we are strong women who don't fucking take shit from nobody. Yeah. And again, Cardi B. Yeah. They have been honestly 
hustling for fucking table scraps for so long in this mm-hmm. industry that I could see how getting into the groove of the scam where it's like, well, we're not killing anyone. We're not raping anyone. We haven't, r- who have we really hurt mm-hmm. to get like wrapped up in that ideation of it and then feel really powerful. I could, I could understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it all began to crumble when in April of 2014, they messed with the wrong mark. A New Jersey cardiologist by the name of Zayad Yunan was lured, drugged, and scammed out of $135,000 over the course of four visits to scores. He kept coming back? Well, here's why. So he told ABC News that he had no recollection of visiting scores and couldn't explain the surveillance footage that places him there. All he could remember was meeting Karina Pasucci and going on a handful of dates with her. As the dates progressed, the other women that Karina knew would show up at the bar or restaurant that they were at enjoying their date. And Karina explained like, oh, these are just, these are my sisters, my cousins, or some friends. My really fucking hot friends. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And soon the date would turn into like... Oh, I'm just a member of the Pussycat Dolls. Exactly. (laughs) So their casual date is like this little party, and each date would end the same way, a blacked out Zion and a bill that he could not explain. And unlike the other marks in this scam, Zayad had never been married, had no children, and therefore a lot less to lose than the married men that were scammed before him. Oh, he could call them out. So he decided gotta to blow the whistle. Over, over, oh, gotta go exactly. for the married men. He decided to blow the whistle on the whole thing, starting where anyone would start. He called American Express to dispute the charges. This launched an investigation into the charges, as is standard with credit card companies when someone cries fraud, and they deemed the charges fraudulent and reversed all of them. So this led to scores actually suing Zayad in an attempt to force him to pay up on the now reversed $135,000 bill. Yeah, I mean, that's a big It's a bill. lot of money, yeah. So yeah. this, unsurprisingly, made headlines in New York City, which drew the attention of the NYPD and the DEA. Yes, Lucy? Question. Yes. Was Scores, as a company, aware of what was going on? Oh, they How absolutely they not? were, and we'll yeah. kind of get to it. But were they, like, officially um, aware? No. Okay. They were not mm-hmm. officially aware, but they were fucking absolutely aware. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this lawsuit gaining headlines got the attention of the NYPD and the DEA. And again, from ABC News, quote, Yunnan learned that law enforcement was far from doubting him. In fact, they had been onto the hustlers for months. They had a cooperator. So someone else was like, was flipped basically to be protected in a suit um, and had run that sting operation in an attempt to catch Keo, Pasucci and their cronies. So they had run a sting previously. Yunnan quickly became the key witness for the detectives and agents on the task force, hoping that the women whom he blamed for allegedly drugging him and racking up fraudulent charges on his card were about to go down. And quickly, Rosie, Karina, Samantha, and two others from different clubs that were involved in the conspiracy were arrested. Mm. But not wanting to go to jail, they all accepted plea deals. Most did not see any jail time at all, though Karina Pasucci and one other associate spent 16 weekends at Rikers. I think it's like a work <laughs> program where they can like oh, leave Rikers during the is week. So to work. intense. I know. 16 <laughs> weekends. They're but weekending just the at weekends. Rikers. Just you weekend. could handle a weekend at Rikers. That would be an oh. epic weekend at Bernie's. Weekend at Rikers. I'm not sure that I could handle a weekend at Rikers. I don't know. Is the we weekend could. like Friday night or like Saturday morning? I think it's Friday night to Monday morning. Ooh. I think. That's a lot of But I'm not weekend. sure. I mean, it That's often how a weekend works great. if you get put away for a DUI. But for a hundred grand? Oh, I do yeah, it for I do it. I do yeah. it for almost any amount of money, but yeah, it pretty wouldn't much. be easy. No, it wouldn't. And also they made oh, way more than a hundred grand a piece on this. No, I know. Mm-hmm. I think she's saying if someone paid me a hundred grand, would I spend the weekend at Rikers? Oh, and the answer weekend. is yes, I would. Oh, a hundred grand per weekend. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'd do it. Sign me up right now. I'm actually a yep. little short on cash. I, right. If this is a thing, <laughs> I'm in. Qu- <laughs> Quarantine <laughs> online shop therapy is real. Um, I will they, film it. Could they pay me in bells? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Seriously. So yeah, that was their sentence after pleading guilty to conspiracy and grand larceny. None of the clubs where the scams took place were ever charged at oh all. Oh my God. 
No Only charges. Only the women and women of color. Right. And gr- to be fair, these are the women who were saying, no one put us up to this. This was our idea. This was our scam. Yeah. So they should be held more responsible. But the club was absolutely aware of their wrongdoing happening under their roof and should also have some responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just ridiculous. But imagine mm-hmm. all of the illegal bullshit that happens in a club like this that they're yeah. unaware of. Right. Like, this I, is just, this is I'm nothing. I'm not surprised that they weren't. Yeah. I mean, clubs are unaware of Ill- illegal sex work that's happening in there, drug use, like all kinds of shit. That Everything. they're just. Uh, bus- yeah. There's they're, a reason why there's no fucking camera in the champagne room. Yeah. There's literally yeah. no such thing as a strip club that doesn't have any illegal activity inside of it. So probably that doesn't not. It's probably me. pretty rare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So say what you will about the women behind this hustle. They've all used this to turn their lives around between writing books, collaborating on the film Hustlers, and even going back to school for a degree in criminal psychology. Get it, Karina? Yeah. We have Karina. not seen the last of these complicated women. And that mm-hmm. is my case. Well done. Good. Job. I really liked it. That was good. It's really a fascinating story. Well, and really, it, I, there's I so much it. to unpack yeah. about, you know, gender norms and stereotypes don't, and misogyny and all that stuff. And there's just a lot to think about. Don't drug anyone. No. And steal <laughs> their money. But if you're going to drug someone, <laughs> some <laughs> make Wall Street it asshole, a rich white <laughs> asshole men. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Who, I mean, Wine and Crime Podcast does not endorse the drugging and theft of rich white assholes. <laughs> I mean, but a little bit we do. But we don't, Julian, our lawyer. We're sorry. We love you. Special but like thanks. a little, but like a little bit. But like we if do. you're going to break the thanks. law anyway. Special <laughs> thanks. Special <laughs> thanks. You're echoing. You're so loud. Special thanks to our fan picker, Jessica. Jessica. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I am. I am. She's been drinking the juice, people. This episode has taken us two days to record, and now that means Kenyon has been hammered two times. (laughs) She's also had to put on mascara for two days in a row, and that's rough for anybody. Thank you. Thank you to Jessica. Nailed it. Green Joe. Grigo. Jessica. Grigo. Grigo. I, I go no. Yep. <laughs> Jessica, thank you for your support. God bless. Thank you also to Addie Mama. Ooh. Addie Mama? You sound like a character in Animal Crossing. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Thank you to Lana Bass, who I can only assume is the twin sister of Lance Bass of InSync <laughs> fame. <laughs> Lana Del Bass, if I catch another fucking sea bass in Animal Crossing, I am going to lose it. They're worth money. She, she They're only not wants worth that to much catch money. A turnip. Thank yes. you to Tara <laughs> Wellington. Ooh, I love your beef. I, I love need your some beef. beef. I need some beef Wellington because I am wasted. I need to sober up. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> She's Wastington. <laughs> Thank you. I am Wastington. Allison Thompson. Uh, <laughs> Allison, <laughs> you're our Gallison. <laughs> Thompson. Yay! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Good one. Uh, <laughs> Thank you to Nikki Spivey. I'm not going to spy on you, Nikki Spivey. Also, there is a local Minnesota <laughs> sensation weird. by the name of Gary Spivey, yes. who is mm. a fortune teller who goes on the Dave Ryan in the Morning Show, the which is trash oh. or whatever. I love Best yes. hair in the world. Oh, yeah. Thank you to Sammy Peters. I am petering out over yep. here, but I just refilled my wine glass, so I feel better. Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> Getting it. Okay, Lucy, we got to swap. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, thank you to Harley Tanner, who requested me specifically. I won't tan your hide, Harley Tanner. The more you ride your Harley, the tanner you get. There you get. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Cassidy McCabe. You sound like a cow person. 
which what? was supposed to be ungendered, but it just Holy sounded shit. like an insult. I meant a cowboy or a cowgirl. Like oh. a Macau. Like there's a lot of cu- Not a cowboy, there. not a cowgirl, anything like in between. I'm trying not to gender my terms, but it just came out as an insult. I'm sorry you just that I called you a cow. Generous person. listener, a cow. So we're just gonna no, move. I said a cow person. Mm, you lingered Thank on you. cow. <laughs> Thank you to Stephanie Spicer. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. I hope you never take a job as the White House press secretary. You're the spice of life. (laughs) You spice things up. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, Lucy, try this again. Thank you to... (laughs) (laughs) Don't call them a cow. I was trying to be gender neutral, for fuck's sake. Thank you to Krista Olson. Olson with two S's. You're probably (gasps) Norwegian. Ooh. You sound like a cow person. You sound like a cow person. Krista, you're the crystal in my eye. Ouch. <laughs> uh, ouch. <laughs> Fetch me the eyewash. Okay, thank you to Sonera Taylor. Sayonara, Sonera Taylor. I'm going to go tailor a jacket. <laughs> oh, thank you to Dana Rodriguez. I Dana hardly know her. Know her. <laughs> z- 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 <laughs> Holy oh shit, Lucy, go <laughs> hurry! Thank you to Caitlin Jones for your increase from one to five dollars a month. And I that used you well to be loved by Caitlin by Jones. Anyone. By Caitlin Jones. What's new, Caitlin Jones? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Okay, kicking off our $10 a month tier and getting a fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass at some point in the mail at some time in your life is Daniela (laughs) Bastion. You're a bastion of hope in these trying times. (laughs) Thank you to Jenna Morell. I am searching for some ass morels mm. that will be as delicious as you, Jenna. Did you see Forage my Instagram deep. of all my morels? Yeah. We made morel. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, what's it called? Risotto. Risotto. So good. Mm. Thank you to Kayla Harmon. You bring us harmony. Just kidding. Oh. We're a chaotic mess. Please bring us mm. more harmony. <laughs> We're suffering. Thank you, Kayla. Oh, we are <laughs> suffering. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly who did not provide a last name, so I can only assume it is Kardashian, and I hope that you Mm. sip your next Mm. beverage Beverage. out of the fucking patriarchy wine glass while wearing your humblot watch or whatever that's called. (laughs) (laughs) And your gucky pants. Gucky pants. (laughs) (laughs) And your channel penny loafers. Thank you to Emily Potenza. Mm. I need to learn how to make polenta. Mm. You have the potential <laughs> to make polenta, Emily yeah, Potenza. Sure Thank you. Thank you, Cassie Hines. Gonna pour you over the top of my meatloaf, you saucy oh, bitch. My. Thank you, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Hannah Baker who raised their donation from five to ten dollars a month, and I'm gonna go bake you a pie, Hannah Baker. Mm-hmm. Thank you to another raiser. We've got Megan Reingart. I forgive your relatives for whatever <laughs> they did in World War II, Megan. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Holy shit. This is the darkest fucking special thing. I'm hoist. We're blaming no drunk Kenyan. No, no relation. God. Kicking <laughs> off our $15 a month tier. Aaron McMorris, you'll be getting a fucking patriarchy wine glass in the mail at some point, along with some dusty, dusty trash. Aaron Mc- McMorris, I want some <laughs> McMorris. Your donation. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda Martin. I think I've had a few too many martinis today. (laughs) So I'm going to keep drinking water so I can see straight. Thank you 
to Christina Jones. I am jonesing for more of your generosity. And okay. You're so generous. <laughs> you are so generous, and it is not at all generous to say so. Mm-hmm. All right, kicking off our $25 a month level, we got Miss Alexandria. How formal. Here they are, wow. Miss Alexandria. Alexandria. Look at her. Look at her. Doesn't she, she look fun? Doesn't fun? she look fun? <laughs> our Monroe's American Teen Princess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Oshi. I'm so sorry for all of the OSHA violations that I am sure have <laughs> happened today within the Whining Crime Podcast LLC. Thousand percent. <laughs> Thank you to Jessica Lancaster. Jessica Lang? Isn't that? <gasps> Jessica Lang. We are Native distantly related. Mm. No, she spells isn't it differently. La- isn't Lancaster Lucy, is like a you? Game of Thrones thing? Yeah. Oh, Lancaster? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Jamie Lancaster? Jamie? Yeah. <laughs> Lannister. You. Oh, Lannister. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, Vista. Thank A you Lancaster so much. always pays their debts. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it in a minute. <laughs> All right, last but not least, and don't go away just yet because I got a joke for you, fuckers. Because as if this episode couldn't get any longer, that is fi- more. $50 a month <laughs> tier, which will give you a, fr- a uh, wine glass and a tote and a <laughs> episode topic pick wine case topic. Ashton Salazar, <laughs> you are absolutely a character from Dungeons and Dragons, and you should be proud yes. of it. Are you ready for my joke? I'm Amanda, don't make that yes, face. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So End it. <laughs> this is just a PSA. If you get an email with the subject line, knock, knock, don't open it because all the Jehovah's Witnesses are working from home now. <laughs> <laughs> No oh es mormo. God. No es mormo. No, no es mormo. Es mormo. <laughs> Por qué? <laughs> oh, good fuck Thank me. Thank you all That's so all. much for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs> we love you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Hi, I'm Sarah Lee King, the host of Beyond the Dollar, a show where we have deep and honest conversations about how money affects your well-being. And by honest, I mean honest. One major lesson that keeps coming up again and again is that money isn't just about the numbers. It's so much more than that. I'm bringing on humans just like you to talk about their well-being through the lens of money. I speak with folks like Charis, who talks about their perspective of being poor and trying to buy a house. I was willing to do whatever it took to get in a home of my own because the reality is that if I ran out of money, I would either be faced with living on the streets or moving in with friends because the programs out there that are touted to help poor people, they don't help enough people. Or Nicole, about her honest account of the uncoupling process while navigating her finances. We qualified for essentially like the easy version, right? The like fill out this stack of paperwork, pay, you know, whatever amount you have to pay and then you're done. Or Adam, who speaks about his decision to not pay back multiple six figures worth of student loan debt. Looked at my options with my debt and said, you know what? I think that the 
economically advisable thing here is to pay as little as I can. That and so much more. So will you join me? Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you download podcasts or beyondthedollar.co. I hope to see you there.